I can ask him a direct question. But I can't. No, 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 no. You can ask him for forgiveness that's and for direct. guidance directly. That's a, that's a direct question. You're not going to be like, okay, God, so what did you mean by, why not? Um, are you the light? Yeah, but and why then not? Expect, why not? Because if I can ask well, him for because forgiveness. Because if you had direct revelation from God, yeah. that would be a miracle. What? And it doesn't make sense to say God create evil, rape, wickedness. So let's not say planet. God created rape. Where did it come from? Well, it came from if he us. Cre- if he created everything, beings. right, but he created us. Can but, you, but can you start finish. life again? Of, of course. So you can get a cell, an amoeba, put in a petri jar, and then it will become a human if you wait long enough or do enough. Not become a human, because you said life. You didn't say human. Well, I suppose, There's different forms okay, of then, life from, in Arabic. If you said huwa, yeah. what would that be? It means he. He? A male? No. Because so, I could so say huwa, my, I could say huwa mobile phone. Does it mean he is my? There's no word. There's no it in yeah. Arabic. Do you understand? Like I can give you again other quotes where it's literally talking and showing a large right. form and, and, and walking most of these and things like that. Okay, so so I like to relate it back to Surah Khlas where God says there's nothing like him. So okay. that's the first point we need to keep in our heads when it talk when we talk about the qualities of God. Without free will, there can be no evil. So, for instance, we believe angels exist. But we believe they don't have free will. All they can do is good. And right. So that proves my point. You've just answered my point. Or well, what's that? The point that Allah can make you all good. Because if He can make the angels all good, yeah, He should be able to make the humans all good. Oh yeah, that's. We agree with that. Allah right. says so in the Quran, so, so we could have made everyone he, Muslims. How did Iblis become Iblis? Well, how did he have the ability? Yeah. Because you know what Iblis means, right? Hi everyone, my name is Jayad Ahmed. I'm a Muslim and I'm excited to be here. It's my first time on the show and it'd be lovely to have a dialogue and get to know uh, where we stand and if we agree, disagree. And sure. conversation is the best way to, to learn. Absolutely, absolutely. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm Sakin. Um, I'm following a culture known as Wu Sabat. Um, Wu Sabat is not a religion it's um it's for everyone but it's really african spirituality and anyone can can join um it's really about providing solutions for for humanity yeah yeah okay so yeah we're gonna have a good conversation today um i kind of have a few points that i think might be good to guide our conversation um so obviously you've you've said you're muslim yes um what I want to know, that's by way of introduction, what, what type of Muslim are you? Um, because obviously there are different types of Muslims, different sects. So I just want to know which one you are and, um, and also why are they different sects? Um, yeah, that, that would be kind of where right. I want to start from so I know who. Okay, um, no worries. Yeah. So there are three main types of Muslims in the world today. The first is the majority, roughly 8% of the world, that's Sunni. Islam. Okay. And then the rest, the 19%, you could say is Shia Islam. And then the, the rest of them are Sufi. Okay. So the way they differ is mostly in the beginning, you could say it's more of a political split. Mm. So after the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, died, uh, there was a dispute about who should lead next. Right. So one group said that his closest uh, ally and the person who was his second in chief, Abu uh, Bakr, should mm. be in charge. Right. And then uh, another group said Ali, his nephew and his blood, should be in charge. Mm. And so first it began with a political dispute who should be in charge, but then eventually there were spiritual differences. Okay. And so the Shias believed that uh, the lineage of Ali is quite sacred. Um, it'd be good to talk to Shia about this, but from the Sunni perspective, we do think that they became a bit heretical because mm-hmm. they believe that the descendants of Ali have supernatural powers that we'd only ascribe to God. So that's Shiaism. And then Sufism was, first it was a, a part to tell it's a, it's a, it's a kind of, uh, part of Islam in of itself. It's, it's to do with purifying the soul. It's about uh, contemplation. Mm. But eventually it became its own sect. And now you know it mostly in Turkey where you have people who are 
kind of, they wear the dresses and they spin around and it's about spirituality and becoming one with God. And most mainstream Sunnis would see this as a heretical branch as well. Okay. And then in Sunni Islam itself, there are main, the four main, what we call madhabs. So, uh, I mean, it's a whole science. We're going to have to take the whole uh, podcast to get into this, but yeah, just I, I'm Hanafi. What's, what's, so, yeah. yeah. So what, what are the four? So we have Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi, and Hanbali. Okay. And different parts and regions of the world, they're influenced by these four major scholars. Mm -hmm. And they've come with their, and, and so they follow one of these four schools of thought. Okay. Um, but recently, a Salafi sect has, not sect, a Salafi school has appeared where they don't follow any school. They right. kind of follow their own interpretation. So you only mentioned four. So what about other people like um, Ahmadiyya? Yeah, you did oh, mention right, people yeah. like the Nation of Islam. You did mention Ansar, because I know there, there are quite a lot of others, but you only mentioned those three. So are those others not considered to be Muslims? So that's a very good question. Um, in so far as Ahmadiyya, mm. they believe that there's a prophet after the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right. that came, um, Ahmad. Mm. And, uh, so most Sunni Muslims would see them as heretical as well, because a part of the belief of Islam is that you have to believe that Muhammad is the last and final prophet. Right. But the Ahmadiyyas, they will have arguments against maybe he's the last messenger, but not the last prophet. Mm. And that's a whole discussion of itself. Okay. And then in terms of the nation of Islam, yeah, that's another topic. Um, I'm not an expert in it, but from what I believe, what, what I know of it, uh, there was a fellow called Elijah Muhammad, mm -hmm. very influential, uh, and Muhammad, uh, Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, they were part of it initially. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of stuff happened, but from what I know is that Elijah Muhammad's son in the 2000s, he reformed the Nation of Islam to be more in line with... No, but what I'm saying is when you mentioned the different Muslims, yeah. so, do you not, do, are they not considered to be... So with the Nation of Islam, I think we consider them to be a kind of Sunni version of Islam. Right. We don't think it's a sect like the way we think Shia and Sufis are. Right. Especially nowadays where they, they've kind of reformed and they're more in lines with Sunni teachings. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So how, how long have you been a Muslim, would you say? So I'd say I've been a Muslim... I, of course, I was born and raised as a Muslim, yeah. but growing up in the 90s and the 2000s, it was more of a cultural Islam. I'd say I fully got into practicing properly when I was uh, an early teenager, when okay. I came across uh, channels like Peace TV and such, which actually promoted Islam and was teaching. So it. like in terms of years, how, how long is that? About so roughly? I'd say... 20, oh, 20. 15, 15, 20 years. Okay. So have you done the Hajj? So no, I haven't done Hajj yet. Okay. And in terms of, um, you born into it, what's the difference between someone who's a convert to someone who's born into it? Okay. So, 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 so what do you, could you elaborate a bit further on that? Because some people say, because when we had a conversation with your, with your um, nephew, I think, is it? Your, your brother-in-law, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I asked him the same question. Yeah. And because um, I said to him, I used to be a Muslim right. and I asked him the same question. And he, he was basically saying that I, I converted into Islam, which is a bit different from being born into it. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to know. So, okay. is there a, is there a difference so, in being born into it and mm -hmm. convert into Islam? So, there is a difference. The difference is that uh, when you convert to Islam, there are actually quite a few perks. Mm -hmm. Every sin you've done before that point is forgiven, yeah. and if you are previously a Jew or Christian, you get double the the reward. Of for converting. Oh right. So if you were a Jew or Christian before, yeah, and you convert into Islam, you get double the reward of converting okay. so we do believe in like What's good actions are good deeds and evil actions are bad deeds and okay. so doing something that god would want you to do mm. like alms giving or the rituals of everyday life you get good deeds for that okay. and so converting so that basically itself, it's, it's like a bit like getting reward points for Tesco. it's like saints. a video game yeah yeah <laughs> you just get get back up okay. those points yeah so you get points for being good. yeah Okay, that's that's interesting. So in terms of um like 
when you when you're a Muslim, they're supposed to be what they call the five pillars, right? Do you know about the? So the five pillars of yeah. Islam, yeah. What what would what would you say those are? So it's agreed that those are shahada, so the testimony of faith, salah, which is prayer, yeah, and then the zakah, which is alms giving, two point five percent of your wealth every unit year. Yeah. year. Uh, there's fasting, so and then there's the pilgrimage of Hajj. So if you can afford to, yeah. you should try to do a pilgrimage to uh, Mecca. To Mecca. So if you haven't done all five, are you considered a Muslim still, or like you're, like I said, there's five different yeah. pillars. So, yeah, so, if you could, uh, so a lot of people they can't afford to go to Hajj. Okay. So for these people. Um, until they can afford it, pick up the means to and they don't, it would yeah. be sinful. But if they have the means to, if they don't have the means to, sorry, and they can't, then they still are within the remit of Islam. Okay. In terms of the testimony of faith, every Muslim must believe there's one God and the Prophet Muhammad is his messenger. Right. They have to believe that. If they don't, they're outside the fold of Islam. And then in terms of prayer, there yeah. is a bit of a difference of opinion. Some people say, if you don't pray, you're a bad Muslim. Okay. But then some people might, some schools of thoughts, uh, which are stricter, would say, if you haven't prayed, uh, then you may not be a Muslim at the moment until you come back to prayer. So that's a whole thing in a bit. Sorry, say that again. So if you, if you haven't prayed as in, because you've got like, you have five prayers, prayers a day. And if you, if you didn't pray, even though you could, you had good health, wealth, etc. Yeah. You had the means to, and you, you didn't forget the time or anything, and yeah. you chose not to, and you repeatedly did that, yeah. then that might be enough to qualify you as a non-Muslim now. Right, okay. Yeah. But the but, schools so, of thought... So who's keeping tabs on that when you're still a Muslim, not yeah. Muslim, whether yeah, yeah, you've done Hajj and, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or yeah, so or in terms of everyday life, yeah. uh, we have a thing in Islam called the Hosn al which means goodness of belief. Okay. So a normal Muslim will just think that every Muslim is just a good Muslim. Mm. It's not within faith to try to pry and spy and disqualify people from faith and think, oh, this person's not, this person's not. If you right. say you're Muslim, then you just say, Alhamdulillah, you're Muslim, that's it. Okay. It's none of your business. It's between them and God, whether they, they have fulfilled it or not. Right. And everyone needs to be more concerned about themselves. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you mentioned the five pillars, you didn't really talk about um, Tawheed. Tawheed? Yeah. So Tawheed is not a pillar. It does come under Shahada. So Tawheed is the belief of one God. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, so when you said about taking your Shahada, that's part of... So Tawheed, Tawheed is, is part of the Shahada. Right. Exactly. The belief of one God. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because you didn't say it. So because isn't that saying what you said about there's no other God but, uh, but Allah? What you say? Like, yeah. yeah. So Allah. the when you say La ilaha illallah, Tawheed is part of the Shahada. That's right. the... Everything is, is kind of a science in of itself and, you know, you can yeah. just go on and on about it. Okay. But, uh, yeah, you're right. It's totally All right. So shot. what I really want to talk about then, yeah, you've mentioned that. Thanks for that. Um, I want to really talk about Allah, yeah. the Quran, mm -hmm. Muhammad, and then um, a bit about Hadiths and then um, racism. Yeah. Okay. Because, as I said, I used to be a Muslim and that those things were some of the things that, led me to after studying it thoroughly i was like this is not for me yeah okay so um if we would start with allah yeah what would you what is allah i mean in terms of exactly like is allah a man is he a woman is it a mm. he is it a she is he seen is he unseen where is he mm. um who you know who named him Allah? Mm -hmm. Just there's just some questions like I want to know specifically about. Allah, yeah. yeah, because when you were speaking, you kept saying God. You mm. say God a lot. Yeah. You weren't saying Allah. Yeah. And I think when I had the conversation with your um brother in law, as it was saying to I said, You can't call Allah God, because God is like an English word for the Christian faith. And uh, Christians wouldn't call God Allah. So right, right. that's why I want to really know about who Allah of course. is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Allah simply is the name we believe God has given himself in the Arabic language. Okay. So, uh, with that, so Allah, 
first of all, I'll define who he is according to Islam. I think it's best illustrated in Surah Ikhlas. So God says that he is God, one and only. He has no children, nor is he a child, and there's nothing like him that can compare with right. him. He's not like his creation. We also have 99 attributes, which help us to get a better dimension of uh, to gauge who he is. He's the most just, but he's also the most merciful. He's the most kind, but he's also, you know, got Ghani, so he's the most wealthy he can give. Mm. And so through that, we can understand a few more aspects about him. In terms of uh, Allah, it's a Semitic word. And no, but even that, what you just said, yeah. you said him. So he's a him. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. definitely a man, yeah? So that's it. So he's not a man or a woman. Now, there is a bit of a linguistic issue here because in Arabic, the default... So you know, like in Spanish or Italian, mm. language words are either male or female, feminine or masculine, no, no. even though yeah, they're not men and women. So maybe the table in Spanish would be a masculine word, but it's not a man. And similarly... In Arabic, it's easy to convey. He always says, he did this, he did that, but he's not. And it's just a, sem uh, a semantic, a linguistic thing. So, so you're saying in Arabic, there's no word to specify he or she? So in Arabic, he or she does not necessarily denote gender. That's confusing. I know. Because, yeah, it, in Arabic, you can say he or she. You can say and, he or she. And saying him, that's yeah. denoting a male. Well, that's it. But in and even when you said um, he can't have any son or have any children, yeah. that, I mean, that would have to be a man or a woman, isn't it, to say that? But because he can't have he can't have children, mm. he can't be a man or woman. He's not like a, he's nothing like him. So, but but he says in the Quran, "You are my children." No, no, he doesn't say that. That's in Christianity. You, you're saying in, a, 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 the, in the word the Quran, he the never word, says, "You are my children." To Ben creation. Ibn Ben Ibn. So. Bin Adam means children of Adam. Okay. Uh, Banu it, Israel means children of Israel. But he never says bin Allah, which means son of Allah. He never says that. No, I'm saying to who, to the to us, the children of yeah. humanity. We're not his children? No. We're, we're called bin Adam or Banu Adam, which means the children of Adam. Okay. He's honored us, but we're not his children. Okay. Yeah. The children of God, this is more of a kind of a Christian doctrine. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and yeah, so to, to go back to the word, oh, we can't no, name him as God. Okay. So God says to him belongs, well, Allah says. Sorry, I want to pick oh, up because yeah, you what? said, when I asked you how, who named him, you said he named himself. Yeah, he chose but, this name. But how do you know that information without, like, the book? Because did the Quran not bring about the information about Allah? So, so you wouldn't know the name without the book. So we believe that Allah, throughout time, he has given prophets to humanity. Mm -hmm. The first prophet was Adam. Right. We also believe it was Moses, Jesus, and a bunch of other prophets. And the last one's Muhammad. Right. And to his prophets, through inspiration, he teaches who he is, what he wants from us, where we're going, why we're here, all these questions and so so, so before the, us, so before muhammad came you're yeah. saying that the books before that you mentioned abraham moses mm. etc those books didn't use the word allah so they used they didn't use the word allah but if you look at the uh, the the bible when Jesus is in the cross... What are you calling the Bible? Because when you said the Bible... Well, well, I mean the New Testament here, I guess. Not the Torah. So because the, the Torah was before... Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, so... Was, yeah, but uh, what I was going to say was, in the New Testament, Jesus says, Eli, Eli, la sabachthani. Yeah. Which in Arabic could be, Allah, Allah, la sabachthani. So you or, can or see... Or in Hebrew, Elo, Elo. Exactly. Right. Elo, Elo. Elo, Allaha, Eli, Allah. Right, so you're the saying languages. that the word... For God, before the Quran came, was yeah. would have been Elo. Yeah. Okay. And we also believe that every nation was given their prophet. And mm -hmm. they would have, with their own language, come with an, with an equivalent for Allah in their language. Right. Yeah. It's just that we believe that in Islam... So, so that's yeah. kind of accepting that there were gods before Allah then. Because so, before the Quran came, you're saying Adam, Abraham, Moses, because they all had books. Yeah. Right? Did um, Adam have a book? 
we do because you say he was a prophet. Yeah. So uh, but there's a difference between a prophet and a messenger. Yeah, like Rasul and and Nabi. Nabi. Okay. So, so which one was Adam? So we're not sure. I okay. mean, some people say he might have been given a scripture, but we're not sure. The ones we do know is David, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. We know they definitely got uh, some revelation from. from have God. you heard of um, a Sahuf? Sahuf, so no. Sahuf, you have another. I might do. Can you okay. elaborate? No, that that is the book that Adam received. It, it might be. That's that's why I asked. Okay, so yeah. because Adam had a Sahuf, as you said, Abraham had what? So, like I said, they may have got uh, scripture. Yeah, but. It may not be very important to the grand scheme of things because you're saying may though. That's that's what I'm saying. Like oh, with right. us, we've also about we like to get like the details. The like details, the okay. Because Moses had a book. Yeah, yeah. And and because you're saying Rasul and Nebi. So what makes what's the difference between a Rasul mm -hmm. and a Nabi? A Rasul gets actual revelation from okay. God, a book. Right. And a Nebi does not. Okay. So Musa or Moses yeah. is the Rasul because he got the Torah. To the Torah, yeah. But Harun, his brother Aaron, he's not a messenger like that because. But in the um, Bible, it, it's Aaron that is the prophet. In the Bible, it says that God made Aaron the prophet. Well, that's which the is, thing. Is is, is it's so, not really Moses. So that's the thing. We believe that to be a messenger, you have to already be a prophet. So okay. we believe that Aaron and Moses, they're both prophets. It's just that Moses got the revelation, so he's the messenger. That's okay. the distinction. So you're saying make. Abraham never got any books? No, there is a tradition where we do believe that he might have got a book. So you're saying might have. That's what I'm saying. Like I so, need to. Okay, so when yeah. they say in the Quran yeah. to follow, follow the religion of Abraham, which is yeah. Mila Ibrahim, okay, yeah. what, what would that be then? So, so that's it. Um, God says, follow the religion of Abraham to yeah. the Jews, Muslims, and Christians. And that is monotheism, believing in one God and praying to him. But, but um, Abraham's religion wasn't that because he was, he was called Abraham or called a Hebrew afterwards because he was, um, his father, you know, Terah, yeah. was following Zoroastrianism. And that's what he was following, the, the religion of the children. But then we so, yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah, so we believe that his father was an idol worshipper okay. and his whole people were. And there's actually a story in the Quran where he says he no longer believes in what they believe and then yeah. he makes his own way. And So wouldn't the Quran be incorrect then to tell you to follow the religion of Abraham if, if Abraham's father, who he followed, was... But that's the thing. Following. Abraham did not follow his father's village. He, he actually did. So even if he did initially... He said, I don't believe in this anymore. This is wrong. Okay. This is the religion I follow now, which is Tawheed, believing in one God. Okay. And we believe in that. We believe in the God of Abraham. We believe that. And that's, right, that's what I'm saying. What would the God of, of Abraham be then? That's it. So he told, him, he, he told us through this last message that we believe that he is a lot. Through which last message? The last messenger we believe is Muhammad. Oh, so he, he Abraham told you through Muhammad so, that... No, no, no. So God told us through Muhammad. So okay. uh, we believe that all these prophets worship the same God. Right. They all worshipped Allah or whatever equivalent. And uh, the last messenger who's completed the religion, a bit like a firmware update on your iPhone, you get iOS 20 or whatever. That's the, last the latest version for us. Mm. That completed our religion and it, it basically is the religion of abraham but now what god wants us to do now and so that's but, the, but in the quran it says that if you're in doubt go back to that which was before and that which no, was before says, would be the so Torah. if you're in doubt go back to what allah what has revealed before. yeah which came before Wait, no but what allah has revealed in this context means the quran and the sunnah it, it doesn't actually say that. But anyway, so, okay. so you're saying the Quran and the Sunnah are mentioned in the Quran? The Quran and the Sunnah are mentioned in the Quran, yeah. Follow Allah, itakullah, itakullah. So, so follow Allah, the follow the Messenger. Yeah. No, no, it, it says it, that. It no, I'm saying says it doesn't. That. Yeah, follow the Messenger, no, but it doesn't the, say Sunnah. So, because so, the Sunnah would be traditions. 
Because the Sunnah, what you just said to me, that's from Bukhari. That's a Hadith. That's not in the so, Quran. So, what, what, what is the Sunnah? The that's sunnah what I'm saying is the traditions the, of... So, the Sunnah is the Muhammad, the, the The tribe that Muhammad's culture... So, so, the Sunnah is the practices of Muhammad. In the Quran, yeah, it says, pray it. five times a day. Yeah. But you may not see what you do, how you pray. That's where we get from the Sunnah. That's, that's what I'm not saying, his, but, but that's the, not his Quran, tribe, the Quran doesn't say to follow the Sunnah in the Quran. So again, this that's is That's what just, I'm saying, that's a Hadith. That's from Bukhari's Hadith. So, so we have to define these terms, right? Okay. So the first thing is the Quran says, follow the Quran, follow okay. Allah and follow and obey the messenger. Follow, obey Allah and obey the messenger. Allah meaning what's in the Quran and then obey the messenger and what he does. What he does is recorded in the hadith. The hadith literature meaning Bukhari Muslim. Okay, let me, let me are, okay, yeah, let me, go sorry, I got not going to finish. I didn't, yeah, yeah, I, so, so mm. uh, yeah, yeah, so the, the Bukhari and the Muslim, the hadith literature, but what they're doing is they're preserving the sunnah through what people, I mean, it's a whole science in itself, but it's preserving what the Sunnah is, the traditions of the Prophet, not his people, what he said, what he did, and what he recommends for us to do. Right. But what I'm saying yeah. is that the Quran itself says it's the best of the of a hadith. So so really, you don't need any other hadith because the Quran says it's the best hadith. The Quran, so hadith and Quran are, are, are not the same. No, but I mean, that's what it says in the Quran. I can give you the quote. Yeah, please. Because the okay. Quran Let will never find. say, it will never say, uh, right. so, I'm the I mean, best hadith. No, no, it yeah. does. It literally says that. That's why I was saying to you that, um, okay, go to Quran 39.23. You've got your Quran? Let me find it. It does say that. Because I want you to see for yourself. Yeah. Because, you know, this religion has been here for 1,400 years and... We would never yeah, mix I mean, the two I mean, up. We, yeah, I mean, this is why we're having the conversation course, because yeah. um, we want to we want to kind of get to the to the bottom. So, of what was the reference, please? Thirty nine twenty three. Thirty nine twenty three. I'm gonna. I'm just trying to pull it up as well because you know there are different versions and, like I said in my intro, um, the actual Quran itself is one of the topics that we want to discuss at the moment. I'm still kind of on the Allah question where. You still haven't fully said, like, because you said he's a he and the Quran itself says something slightly different about Allah as well. So I want to come back to that. Have you found it? So, sorry, 39 is Surah az -Zumar. Is that correct? Uh, let me see. 23. Yeah, that's right. And 23 is... Allah sent down the best discourse, a book containing subjects resembling each other, mentioned again and again, shivered from which are the skins of those who are in awe of the Lord, then their skins and their hearts become soft enough to tend to the remembrance of Allah. This is the guidance of Allah with which he brings to the right path whomsoever he wills. As for the one whom Allah lets go astray, for him there is no one to guide. So there is no mention here that this is the uh, best what, what version did What version of um, Quran are you reading? It's so I'm using an app. It's called Quran Explorer. Yeah, but even in the app, you can choose the different. Like, is it Ahmadiyya? What 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 version is so it? So we don't ever. There is no Ahmadiyya Quran. There's the, the, okay. So there's not different versions of Quran. So the Arabic. There's only one version of the Quran that's been preserved. We believe for a thousand four hundred years. You know, on this app, you can see there's loads of different versions. Right? So different there may be different translators, right? Okay, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But different translations does not mean it's different Qurans. It's just humans. But if if me and you translate something, but mine is different to yours, yeah, then that's different. So well, if we have five people translate something, and we read all five side by side, yeah. And they're all saying different but things. But that's why you can't get any Tom, Dick or Harry to translate. Many of these no, people... No, but I'm talking about translate. the ones that are actually, you know, reputable or have... Yeah, so the reputable Qurans. Yeah. A person's done an attempt to translate, but we don't believe that that's a version of the Quran. We believe the Arabic version is the true original version and that this is just an attempt to understand it better. To truly understand it, okay. you'll have to learn Arabic. But yeah. 
All right, so... But there is no mention of hadith here. It just says that God sent down this Quran. If you are good and, and, and follow the, it, it's all right. What I'm saying is the Quran supersedes the hadith, wouldn't you say? I, I So if, a, that, yeah. if Allah's words are the Quran yeah. and Allah's perfect and knows what he's talking about, yeah. you wouldn't really need men to try and give you their interpretations or what they say. Do you understand? I'm saying we could just rely purely on the Quran. So we don't need, right, we don't right, need right, right. a man to then tell right. you something different. So that's the, the point I'm the, trying the to issue, make. I understand. Yeah. Thank you for bringing this up. So the issue with this point is, yeah. if you... So a lot of people, even with madhabs and things, they say, oh, I'm not going to follow Imam Abu Hanifa. I'm going to follow myself or whatever. Like, I'm going to do myself. The issue with oh, this is the Quran, let me just read it, is that you're going off of your own interpretation, which you might not be qualified because... No, you're not going off of your own interpretation because the words of Allah is what you're going off of. Yeah, it? but the that, Quran, that's because the Because that's what you're saying. This comes from Allah and this is the it word It comes from Allah. Allah, but your understanding of it comes from you. Yeah, but I'm saying Allah is smart enough to make sure that everyone who reads what he's saying... It's clear to everyone. Right. Right. So so if I'm reading no, no, his but, words, yeah. I can't then try and interpret it or change it right. to my to suit me or my understanding. So the, the problem with that is that's why he sent a messenger as well. The Allah sent the Quran down and yeah. he sent a messenger to teach us. And then Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's learning. contradiction to me because you know why? Why is because that? Because that's saying that Allah is not capable of Sending a message that everyone can read and understand. That that doesn't make sense to me. Because Go on. if he if he can convey a message to humanity to yeah. us, then why would we need somebody else to come and interpret Allah's words for us to understand? And remember, the person you're talking about is Muhammad, right? Right. Who wasn't a learned person because he couldn't read. Yeah. So that doesn't make sense either because so, if 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 he yeah. can't read, yeah, then he's not really qualified. So so how is he going to read yeah. the Quran right, right, right. and then tell me the words of Allah when Allah's words are supposed to be clear for everyone? Okay, so we have to understand that the Quran in of itself, even though we have it written down, yeah. originally it was a recitation. And the reason why Muhammad was illiterate was that was the miracle. The fact that he created the best literature orally without being educated at all. Yeah, but so, you're saying it's the best literature. No, but when I say best literature, I mean, at the time, they, the Arabs were very proud of their poetry and their prose. Mm. And the Quran was neither poetry or prose. It was his own genre. And right. People were very impressed by it. But even if you don't agree with me with this point, yeah. the point I'm trying to make is that we believe that Allah made Gabriel, Jibreel, come down with the revelation, the, the verses of Quran, and teach it to Muhammad, who would then teach it to us and then explain to us what God meant by this. So by having this process, it's crystal clear what God wants from us. Otherwise, we may interpret it as we want. So I know you, what you're trying to say is, oh, if God was so, you know, wise and effective, he wouldn't need a middle. Yeah, he should be eloquent and, you know, but he didn't want the most intelligent being, but, so he can't make but, mistakes, right? But out of mercy, he gave us a human representative who would teach us how to do it to make it easier for us. Right. We're gonna we're gonna as I said, that's one of the things I want to talk about. Anyways, yeah, yeah. If you just speak but in terms of Allah now, yeah. You still haven't said so you're saying he's not a man, but but you're referred to him as a him. Yeah, due to semantics. Due yeah. to semantics. But the Quran says he's the light. The light of the heavens and earth. Of, and earth. Um, so, so is he I, a light? I, I don't know where this is. He, he no. created light. Surah um, An-Nur, again, Surah An-Nur 24. It says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. His light is like a niche in which there is a lamp. You see it? So what was the verse? Um, 35. 35. That's why when I was saying to you at the beginning, is he, is he a person? Is he a man, a woman? Is he seen? Is he unseen? Like, what exactly is he? Because 
So Allah is the light if, of the if, heavens and the earth. The yeah. example of his light is that of the niche in which there is a lamp. The lamp is in a glass. Okay. So it's a parable. Um, I'm saying, this is why I said, if so, Allah is sending his words yeah. and I'm a person and I'm reading that yeah. and remember that this is meant to be his words. Yeah. And he says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the yeah. earth, right? Yeah. And then I'm saying to myself, okay, Allah is a light, right? Allah, then yeah. I'm, going, I'm going according to what I've read, yeah? Okay. And then I'll be like, okay, what is light? Because... For him to be the light of the heavens and the earth, and he is a light, there are different types of lights. So what light would Allah be to say he is a light of the heavens? Right. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm saying I don't have to go to someone else to interpret for me what I just read. So Because if I came to you and yeah. said that, you like you just said, oh, that's a parable, that's this, that's that. Yeah. But... That's not what it says in the Quran. Now, so that's what this is what I'm saying. In order to understand the Quran, you need to first have the Quran, which we do, and then you need someone who is very learned in the Quran to teach you what it is. Otherwise, you may get confused. See, this this is what's contradictory. You just said you need someone who's learned in the Quran to teach you. Yeah. But then we say the first person, Muhammad, was unlearned. He was not learned. So then you're saying to me, as you said before, that yeah. it needed to be through him to teach us, but he couldn't read and he couldn't write because he was on the Ummi and he was on Learn. Yeah, so, so, it's, you know, no, so it's let me try sense. to clarify for you. Yeah, please. So he's on learned, meaning he's illiterate. He's literate. He's illiterate. He's he can't illiterate. read or write. Right. But God divinely inspired him. He gave him the message through the yeah. angel Gabriel and taught him the religion. So even though he can't read and write, he knows the religion and he knows the verses. He knows, so you don't need to read and write to know what the verses are, right? You do need to read and write to be able to read the Quran. And, you, and, and yeah. Mean, like, how can I read the Quran if yeah, I can't yeah, read? Yeah. But if it was, no, but if, if, if I, if you didn't know how to read and write, which yeah. most of the Sahaba back in the day, they didn't know how to read and write. Yeah. They'd need an Arabic teacher or just a teacher to, to say, okay, repeat after me. This is the verse. And then you could get the verse. And then I'd explain what So that means, you're, means. you're relying on someone else. You're not relying on Allah then, literally. So, I think we've laboured that point a little bit. So yeah. um, we, we can kind of can move on from that. But when oh. I say, when he says it's the light, when I think of light, we, with science, because we've also about, we deal with actual facts, right? Light takes on different forms. We know light is made up of something. Right, but which, you have to make the distinction. Pho photons, yeah. for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, to, go on, sorry. Go yeah, so you have to make the distinction. It doesn't say Allah is light. It says Allah is the light of the world. The is actually a definite article, which is even worse. But you see, I've got more quotes here. Look at this. Right, but this... All of these quotes are yeah. saying they wish to extinguish Allah's light with their mouth. Yeah. They wish to extinguish Allah's light with their mouth, but Allah will certainly perfect his light. Okay. So again, they meant, here you go to Al-Baqarah as well. It says, the example is that of someone who kindles a fire, but when it lights up all around them, Allah takes away their light, leaving them in complete darkness, unable to see. So in order, I, I mean, this might sound like a, a pedantic point, yeah. but it's important because I'm trying to find out who and where and how Allah came about and where he is and whether or not, because when I read the Quran, I see, like I can give you again, other quotes where it's literally talking and showing Allah's right. form and, and, and walking most of these... and things like that. Okay, so so I like to relate it back to Surah Khlas where God says there's nothing like him. So okay. that's the first point we need to keep in our heads when it talk when we talk about the qualities of God. Yeah. The second thing is a lot of this is because the English language may not have captured fully what the Arabic is trying to say. A lot of times, light is used as like guidance. They're trying to extinguish God's guidance, His light. It doesn't necessarily mean that God is light or it's physical light with photon particles that people are trying to extinguish. Um, so, in order to know more. We just have to say, okay, what do what does the tafsir say? What does the actual yeah? But this is what this is where this is the confusion because okay, let's we come to the Quran, but I can show you right in Quran seven one forty three. It says that Moses saw Allah used, and the term is using eyes. Yeah, in Quran eleven thirty seven, 
Allah has hands and eyes. Quran 36, 7 to 1, Allah has hands. The same with 38, 75, 39, 56, 42, 11, Allah is a thing. Um, 43, 84, Allah dwells in the sky. Okay. You know what I mean? So like, if I'm reading this... You need a um, teacher to tell you what it means. Because if you just think, if you just look at it for the literal English, you'll be confused. For instance, where it says God has hands and he grasps all things, or God's got feet and he's going to stomp on people in hell, it doesn't, it doesn't mean like our hands and our feet. So what does it mean? Well, so what it means is that God's trying to give us an image of what he... So it's a, it's a whole Arabic thing, but basically what it means is that God's trying to give us an image of what he means by what he's doing. I know it's a very wordy way of saying it. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if it's but for it the whole world... But it he has and... a hand and he has feet. It mean, whatever it is, it's different to us. Yeah, but that's, it, that's somebody just now thing. making, interpreting it into whatever it is. Because like I said to you, right, in Arabic, if you said huwa, yeah. what would that be? It means he. He, a male. No. Because so, I could so say huwa, my, I could say huwa mobile phone. Doesn't mean he is my. There's no word. There's no it in yeah. Arabic. Do you understand? So okay. it, we're just getting caught up in lots of semantics here. Hands, light. No, no. But I, I'm, phone, I'm just saying things, to you. Things, it, sky. It's the same thing because you keep saying God, yeah. And even when you use the term God, in the Bible, it shows you like where, like Genesis nineteen thirteen, where it says the Lord has a face. Exodus thirty three eleven. He says the Lord has a face. Yeah, yeah. Exodus 31, 18, the Lord has a finger. Psalms 10, 12, the Lord has hands. Mm. Um, Psalms 18, 8, the Lord has a nose. Psalms 18, 9, the Lord has feet. Psalms 33, 18, the Lord has eyes. You see what I mean? So yeah, even when, the when, we're describing, says, yeah. when we're describing God, because you yeah. keep using the word God, and yeah. I go to the Bible, you see God talking and he has emotions and he's walking, and you go to the Quran, you see the same thing. And they're both are from Abraham, who is the father of all nations, as it says in the Quran. So in trying to really um, break down and learn and establish what the message of the Quran is, it's confusing for people if you're saying, I have to go to somebody to interpret it for me, but yet Allah is the best guidance and the Quran is his message and the best message yeah. for humanity. No, but, yeah. So I don't actually really... I shouldn't have to need anybody else. But you should, because if I got the Quran to you right now, yeah. in just the Arabic, yeah. with no English translation, and I said, read that, yeah. you'd be like, I need a translation. I need not a middle I, person. Not if I could read Arabic. But then, even Remember, if you... it was it was given to Muhammad for his tribe, the Quraysh tribe originally. Yeah, yeah. Right, so they would be able... There's no point in Allah giving me something in my tongue for me to read, and then I can't read it. That's back from, that to me doesn't make well, sense. I would have to be able to read it. And he would have to have known that Muhammad couldn't read in the first so place. Is, so is the, the first thing Gabriel said or Jibril said to Muhammad was what? He said read. Which is, what was the word or in Arabic? Or recite, ikra. Recite. Ikra means read. Well, it doesn't necessarily okay, mean even read if you from say, a even tablet. Even if you said recite. Yeah, yeah. To recite something yep, sorry. is from your head. You recite something from it's your from head. Your, it's you from don't, your tongue. You don't read, to read something it's, is to it's, read it from the it's, book. If you recite, and that's I'm what reciting means, right. read. Because he says when you translate it, read in the name of your sustainer, which da 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 da. Yeah, yeah. So it, it did mean read. And it's like, you're asking someone who can't read to read. And then, you, like you said, the angel To Jibril, recite. To recite. Okay, but what was he reciting? Because the he Quran was, wasn't there yet. But the, it was. It was in the what we call the Allah al Mahfuz. So it's it's called the mother of the book, and it's with God, and it was already there. But God, it was already there where? Because it was already with God. Because it wasn't compiled yet. The Quran wasn't. Put it wasn't together. compiled physically in a book, but it already was with God. And right. But how was um how was Muhammad gonna read it if it's with God? Well, that's why God sent Jibril as his messenger to the messenger. And, and asked him to recite. To recite but how can he recite something which he hasn't got yet? But 
so we have to understand that for the 23 years of the Prophet's final years of his life, yeah. the Quran was revealed in stages, piecemeal. In piecemeal, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So he couldn't have read it at the beginning when... So when recite the verses escaped. of your Lord. And these are the verses that are being revealed to him. Yeah, but what so I'm saying won't. is, listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying to yeah. recite something is to know it from your head. Like if I've got lyrics in my head, I can recite those lyrics. Yeah. So to read something is for me to have the piece of paper yeah. with the... Start to read and right. then I start to read. Yeah, so Jibreel so, yeah. inspired Clarified. the prophet to recite. He inspired him to recite. Well, the, oh, sorry, Allah inspired the prophet through Jibreel to recite. What? Okay, you know what? I'm, I'm still not getting that because that, yeah. that Allah can give the message directly yeah. to Muhammad. Yeah. But he doesn't. He gets someone to come to tell him to read. He, but then Jibreel, you're saying... Yeah. It's not to read, but to recite it because it's already, the book is with God and he's reciting it because the angel Gabriel is inspiring in him. It's, it's confusing. You haven't clarified. So properly. simply, God, Gabriel, Muhammad. Right. God has the Quran. Yeah. He's saying, okay, tell Muhammad this part of the Quran. J. Gabriel comes, teaches uh, Muhammad and the verse comes, the perfect time from him to learn that verse and then he uh he, he spreads that verse and lets the people know right. and then we get the quran and we don't know and he teaches us what it means unless we go astray and we think oh what does he mean by that because sometimes with language there may be some you know entendres and things right but yeah that's simply it god right. gabriel muhammad that's it so but, everything went from god to gabriel to muhammad yeah Okay, yeah. but why couldn't God just give it to Muhammad directly? Well, that's the thing. Does God know or do you and I know? He God could have literally just said, okay, you know what? Click fingers. Everyone's got Quran downloaded in their head. They know yeah. what's right. But he didn't want that. Why? Because why? first of all, God knows best. He doesn't tell us everything. But the second thing is he does want to test us, to test our faith and for, for us to use but the that, intellect but, but he's given he us to come you to you if, if he already knows everything? Well, that's the thing. Yeah. If Judgment Day happened, like today. Oh, so there then, is a Judgment Day. Okay. Oh, we do believe in a Judgment Day. Okay. Yeah. If so Judgment Day we'll happened. We'll come back to that because yeah, that's yeah. interesting. If it happened yeah. today, right? Yeah. And then God said, I know what, hap I know what happens with you. You're going to go hell. Mm. You'll be like, but how do you know? You never, you know, you never tested me. I never actually lived my life. What do you mean, how do you know? How can I say to God, how do well, you know? Well, that's the thing. You, people may think that this is unfair because they weren't given the opportunity to actually live their life. So just because God knows where you end up, it doesn't necessarily mean that you were forced to go there. You went there of your own accord. It's just God knows that you ended up there. And so... No, you didn't because you're saying to me, yeah. it's only if I don't follow the Quran... Don't follow, sorry? Don't follow it. Like if I don't if I don't apply and what I'm the Quran and I'm reading, yeah. then I'm a sinner, right? You sin if because you Because you were saying God. about me getting my points and stuff. So if I do the Good right deeds, thing, bad deeds, but right. ultimately we go heaven because of God's uh, mercy. Yeah, but what I'm saying is yeah. God's the God already so God's prepared two places, a heaven and a hell. Yeah. And then he he knows who's gonna go where, right? Yeah. So then there won't be a point a need for the test. No. Because if he knows what's in your heart and he knows everything, then he already know that you're going to go to heaven and someone else is going to go to hell or vice versa. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense for him to So test, the issue with this is, is the idea of predestination. Right. Just because God knows where you're going to end up doesn't mean that you're forced to go there. You go you there. Are, that's, why I'm, that's why I made the point about it. How am I going to determine yeah. how or where I'm going by myself then? Through free will. Right, yeah. but then you're saying if I choose not to do what God wants me to do yeah. through the Quran, yeah. I'm going to go to hell. So, so that means I don't have the free will then because so I can't the choose to do what I want because when I choose to do something that God or Allah doesn't want, yeah. I'm going to hell. So I don't have free will. So I have so to do you, what he wants me to so do. So you have free will insofar that you have the will to disobey God or obey God. But in terms of uh, the outcome of that, you have to obey God in order to go to heaven. And if you disobey but God... But that's what I'm saying. You just said the same thing I've just yeah, said. But meaning that, that you can't choose not to disobey God then. Because if you choose to disobey God, you're going to so, hell. So I think this is a semantic thing. When I say free will, it means that 
I have the will to stand up and like burn this place. I have the will to do that. Yeah. But if I do that and affect, you know, livelihoods. Well, what do you lives, understand by the word free then? Because I'm getting confused. You're the saying, free will means I have the will to do. I can, so I'm free the, to do it. I have the free. Uh, so I have the will to disobey God. But if I do, I will be punished for it. Don't you see that, how that, that doesn't make sense? If I have the free will yeah. to do it, yeah. he's told me I can do it. Yeah. So then why do I get punished if I do what he says I can do? Because you know do? what's right and wrong. But So does he. Sorry? So does he. Allah, God. He knows yeah. that as well. So, ex so it all depends. Like We have to know what the rules are. The rules are, we been Muslims believe this is a test. And right. within this test, you have the free will to disobey God. I know it seems that you see, I think you think that because we don't have the free will to disobey God without punishment, it's not truly free will. It isn't. But because I, then I can't choose. No, but so you can choose. So it's I, just but that I can only choose good then. I can only choose to do you, what he wants me to do. You, you, so you should choose only to do good. You see, we're just saying the same thing. You're saying I should. Yeah. But then he's saying I can choose the other side. And if I choose the other side, yeah. I'm going to get punished. So free will does not mean no consequences. Those two are not So it's not free then? Because consequences... No, but we do believe free. free will means... Okay, so my definition of free will is that I have the will to do good and bad. And that's it. I don't really... The consequences are... But wouldn't it be easier for you not to have What's your definition of free will though? Free is free. Like, it's, like, it's like me saying, yeah? You can have this iPhone for free. But, but, but then I'm saying, well, it's not really free because... If you don't use it the way I want you to use it, I want it back. So, so is it free or is it not free? But that's the thing. A free iPhone, that means an iPhone with free, no cost. Right, well, let's say this is will. I'm saying, hey, well, it's free will. It's yours. Free, do what you want. Free will? Yeah. As that's in your, like, your will to do what you want. It's, okay, so this is an iPhone. You can do as you like. No, no. Let's forget the iPhone. Okay, I just use yeah, that as an analogy. Because yeah, you yeah. ask me what do I see. Because I'm you saying free. Like, yeah, yeah. Free is free. I can't say this is yours. Take it. It's yeah. yours to use. All I'm saying is this: yeah. that we believe free will does not mean no consequences. That's all we're saying. So, and I'm saying because there are consequences, it's not free. I, I don't know. It's a semantical point. Okay. Well, yeah, we can yeah. move on. Let's move on from that. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Um, so we don't, we, we can't see Allah? Can we see him? So we can't see Allah, no. And we, we can't see God. Okay. okay. So how do we know he exists? So multiple ways, but uh, first of all, I guess a Muslim would say that the proof that Allah exists mm. is the Quran. The fact that okay. we believe Stop it's there a miracle. Me. There's no original Quran today. So there is. There is. So you're saying to me, yeah. when Muhammad was receiving the Quran in pieces, yeah. where was it written on? So we would say that it was in his heart, in his mind, and he was, it was memorized. It, it was, was in his heart. So it wasn't written down. So, okay. So again, it's semantics. The original Quran is in the Lawh al mafud the mother of the book with God. No, the, the Quran I'm, that came down question, to earth... Though. Yeah. So when was it written down? Is was it written down or yes or no? So it was written down right. during Uthman's time, the, right. the third caliphate. Right. But it was memorized by multiple So stars. it was written down. That's what I want to get. It was written down, yes. Right. But and originally with the prophet, because he's illiterate, it was within him. It was within his mind and he knew. So basically, over a period of 23 years when the, he was getting in pieces, yeah. it was in his mind. Yeah. For 23 years. Before yeah. it was compiled into a book. Yeah. So it wasn't written on like animal skin. It was written. It was. Some people did scribe it. But for the whole Quran for it to be compiled, it was during Uthman's or Abu Bakr so his time where it was actually compiled. The whole No, thing no, I'm saying before front. we're coming into that, we're, yeah. before Uthman um, got, that's what I'm saying. It was burnt, right? But no, no. So people did inscribe it. They yeah, did that's inscribe what I'm saying. Whatever it, was available. The whole thing. Okay. That's yeah. what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole thing was never written down. So the whole thing, it's, it's, a, it's, it was it's orally, it's, it's a orally transmitted, it was memorized. So it was never written down, the whole thing. When? Okay, as he's receiving it, so he yeah. received... As he's like, receiving like, it, for, he saw... Surah al yeah, first yeah. surah. He memorizes it, he studies it, he, write, he teaches it to everyone. Yeah. And it's not written down. He doesn't need to write it down. 
Okay. All right. So then he receives the other surahs, yeah. like Baqarah, which is the second one, and then that's not written down either. So he's just memorizing it. Yeah, it's in his heart. Yeah. For 23 years, he's yeah. just memorizing. Now, most people can't remember what they did last yeah, night, much but, alone 23 years. Yeah. Okay, so then at what point was it compiled into an actual written book? So... And, and and what was it compiled from? Yeah. Okay, so so just to lead on for the last point, yeah. I know most people can't remember. I can't remember what I had for breakfast last week. Yeah, that's why I'm surprised. But first of all, we have to understand that we believe he's a prophet. He's got supernatural, mir miraculous abilities and things that God gave him. But that's man-made. That's not in the Quran. What's man-made? He's super, supernatural well, abilities and all that. That's a belief. Anyone can do that. Like, that's what I'm saying to you. Like, if it's not in the Quran... We can't, I can't subscribe to it because the first word to go by is Allah's words. Yeah. First, number one. Yeah. Because you said Allah, Jibril, Muhammad. I know, but if you so, believe in God, then you have to believe in miracles. No, no, you don't. Well, if you believe because in the Quran, okay, you have okay, to believe in miracles. When you say belief, yeah. this is where I think we differ because in Wusabat, we know a belief to be something that anybody can have. Yeah. which is different from the facts. Okay. The facts is going to be what is Allah's word? What did Allah say right. in the Quran? Okay. Because that would be the most authentic word, you see, before other people's like right. interpretation or okay. what they say it is. So what I'm saying is that from studying Islam, I know that the original Quran was written on different like pieces. Anybody can Google this. Like yeah. it was, it was, it was, like I said, on animal skin, on bones, on that like, it was over yeah, the time it yeah. was being people written down. People inscribed it on right. objects and things, and yeah. that's what was originally then compiled into a no, book. No, that's incorrect. Okay, so what was burnt then? Sorry, but what does burnt come from? What do you mean? By I burnt? mean, like Uthman, as you said. Yeah. If you study the history, he burnt all the the. the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So some people made scribal errors. So in, in, to, to standardize it, he was he was able to dispose of these Qurans that had these scribal errors for an authentic yeah, version of it. So how did he know that there were, there were errors? Well, because, I don't know if you know this, but like uh, the Quran is oral. It's, it's a thing that you memorize. Yeah, I do know. Because... Quran, Muslims, they memorize many chapters. Some people memorize the whole Quran. And it's not so. It's not like the Bible. No, but what I'm saying is to and memorize you recite it, it every day. To memorize it, yeah, you and have correctly to, memorize it correctly. Yeah, yeah, you have to memorize it from something. Yeah, and so if you have it's a Quran so, teacher, and I say repeat after me, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, yeah. and then you repeat it, you don't need it to be written. You can actually learn it from other people. And so, most of the Sahabi were illiterate, mind you. And how did they learn how to pray when they can't read or write? They learned it from. So you're learning. agreeing with me that there isn't. The original words that came from Allah. The original words down, were were words, down. and then they were written down by Abu. Because Bakr. you know the Quran today, yeah, it's not original. What do you mean by that? Sorry, I mean it's not original. Like so, the recitation not, is the, the original... same as Muhammad. That's what we believe. Okay, yeah. well, let me explain what I mean by that. Go on. The 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 order of the Quran is different today. Do you know that, right? Yeah. So when the... so so Surah. The the first surah, yeah. What number would that have been originally? So I don't know, but it was what, a ninety six. But what I do know is that after all the verses were revealed to Muhammad, yeah. we believe that Allah instructed the angel Gabriel to tell him what orders all the surahs should be, all the chapters should be. So we believe that. So when he was getting it, it, it is, wasn't the order he was getting it. In. No, no. Okay. Explain that for me. So just because it's not in the order that you find it at the end doesn't mean that that's how it should be. Like so what I'm saying is, it's been it's been turned like it's been moved around. Things are different now. Even the Arabic is different. Okay, that's, so that's I, I don't agree that say. the Arabic is different. But okay, do you know that of... a system of grammar was introduced into the the original Arabic? So what do you mean by that? Sorry. Okay, so do you know what Taweed is? Taweed. Tajweed. Yeah, Tajweed, yeah. Right, yeah. So Tajweed is how you would recite things. Right, right? it's a system of Arabic yeah. that was introduced with the vowels like the Tamil so, Buta and all of that. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah. which is where, that's what I'm saying. So I, I don't think you're sitting, you're going to sit here and really say to me that the original Quran that was received by Muhammad yeah. still exists till today. I, so it is. I mean, yeah. 
You're saying it is. So when you say the Tajweed point, yeah, this is what they were reciting. It's just years later where people are studying. So this is what they were reciting. Let's give these rules names and let's call it Tajweed. It's still the same thing. No, but when, the, I, when me and you are conversing, we're talking. But maybe thousand years from now, people be like, actually, maybe I can oh, show you something. But keep talking. I'll yeah. find something. Yeah. So just because it's Tajweed, it's 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 the same recitation. Yeah. This is um, this is a Quran. Yeah. Okay. Which which our teacher um, translated. Yeah. So I, is there Arabic in that? Or yeah, yeah, just... there's Arabic. That's okay. why. That's why I'm trying to show you because cool. it shows. Um, like I don't know. If you, I mean, we don't have time to kind of go through it now, yeah. but you can see here yeah, the different that the original order. That's why I was able to tell you. Look, the order that you got one, and then the original okay. one would be ninety six. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I can give um the brother this, but you see, look, the original script of the Quran. So you've got. The English equivalent, the initial, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Because when you study the Arabic, yeah, you can see. And um, what I want to show you is that, obviously, it's got the whole history and everything in there, yeah? Um, the different people. Yeah. But if you look at here, for example, you got like, it shows you the Arabic and the uh, Aramaic Hebrew, because me and your... Um, Brother in law, we're talking about this the last time. Right. So you can see, for example, the word, for example, peace in Syria, Sir Arabic. Shalom, yeah. Right. Similarities. So like that, yeah. like you say, Dawood. David, Dawood, yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's so different. you can you can see the actual script of each one. And then when you go into like there's different variations of of the words as well, yeah. But we can um, like I said, for time. See, look. This was the, the cover of the book, and that would have been the original classic, because you've got different types of Arabic here. That's a classical Arabic. So by the right. time you get to... So, sorry for cutting you off. No, yeah. go ahead. So I think I might know what the issue is here. So yeah. even us, like I'm Bengali, right? Yeah. We have an indo pak friendly Quran, okay. where the script is easier to read. What's an Indo? Indo Pak, Indian Indo -Pak, Pakistan, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's sorry, easier. I didn't even ask you about where you're originally. Yeah, yeah, my parents right. from Bangladesh. Okay. So, Indo Pak. Right. But if you recite it, it will sound the same as the Uthmani script. Even though the script is different, the recitation's the same. Right. And we have to remember that the Quran is a recitation ultimately. But this is where. This is just where... because it's written in a different style. Doesn't mean it's any different. The meaning is the same. It will still say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen in the beginning. Right. And that's because that's what God revealed. What, but, but, but the Indo Pak may yeah. be like, oh, they made it clearer and longer, and but it doesn't mean it's any different in the meaning. It's the same meaning. And that's well, why we believe it's the same. And if you look in the Birmingham, uh, if you look in Birmingham, you can find one of the oldest manuscripts of the Quran. Yeah. It's literally the same as the one we have today. Okay, so like you yeah. see this, this is the Moroccan Quran, yeah? Alright, let me have a look. Yeah. I'm a bit short sighted. It's so, alright. You see how that is. Yeah, different. so I, I can see so this sometimes in Arabic they do calligraphy. So you find that they'll very broad, swooshing uh Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Stuff. There are actual different scripts. But that doesn't change the meaning. It's that still says Bismillah. And that okay. means in the name of God. But it doesn't what change I'm the meaning. Is, when yeah. you deal with like the different dialects, like the Pakistani Arabic, it's gonna Not be dialects, different. different Writing styles. So no, no, there's it. different writing sty styles, yeah, but yeah. there's also different the way that Arabic is spoken in different countries. So different. we have, I the, think what you mean reason... is the different kiraats. There's warsh, hafs. We have like seven or eight modes of recitation. Right. But the meaning will be the same. It's just to, it was revealed to Muhammad, we believe, because uh, during the, the time people had different accents. And okay. So, so to accommodate that, but we still have those preserved. All oh, right. If you do want to, um, we can look. You can have a look at this um, at some point. This is this is a Quran that was translated word for word, um, without like trying to be on one person's side or another. It's just like this is what the Arabic says, right? Translated to English. But you know, we've kind of covered about Allah and the Quran a little bit. Um, so if somebody's reading the Quran today. They're reading a translation into English. This is why when they say. Like I asked, what does Allah mean? And, and your brother-in-law was like, it means God. But in the Arabic, it wouldn't mean that. Well, Allah means God or the equivalent, the, the one God, the one that we worship. 
there's but no I'm change. Saying, how does Allah mean God when it's English? So again, semantics. Because again, we have to look at when the language was, when the language came to be. Yeah. You see what I mean? And are, are you saying, because Arabic's 1400 years. Yeah. Well, we believe Arabic was is a very ancient language. You can look at the branch, the Semitic tree. It's it's more than one thousand four hundred years. The Quran was revealed that time, but Arabic Oops. was there before then. Okay. Yeah. So so you're saying when the Quran was being revealed, yeah, it was being revealed in Arabic. We believe that, yeah. But Arabic was already there before that. Arabic was already spoken. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's move on a little bit because yeah. I think we've covered uh, Allah and Quran. Yeah. Um, what about right, Muhammad? Yeah. Yes. Where do you, know, do you remember when he was born or where he was born? So we believe he was uh, born in Mecca. Well, in, in the Arabian Peninsula, he was born maybe around thousand four hundred years ago, and uh, yeah. And when he was receiving the Quran. When he was around 40, he started receiving right. the call. And, and he, um, do, you remember, do you know who Waraka is? So Waraka was this Christian oracle. Yeah. Khadija's wife's cousin. That's correct. And he went there in order, she, she went there because he was getting this revelation and he was worried, yeah. why am I getting this revelation? And then Waraka said from signs, like he had a birthmark between the shoulder blades, that you're a prophet and uh, you have to deliver this message. And this is what I think is up with you. And then after that, he realized he's not crazy. He's actually has to deliver the message. That's what we believe. So, so how did Waraka know that? All the, why did why did um, Muhammad have to go to Waraka for Waraka to tell him yeah. that he was... So we actually prophet. believe in Islam that the Christians and the Jews were actually notified that there'd be a messenger born in the Arabian Peninsula. Mm. And so a lot of Christians and Jews actually went there in order to see if there was a messenger. Right. And so Christianity, you find in the Sira that there's Christians and Jews there, and mm. there's a very interesting interplay between them. So he went there because Khadija said he's the most wise. And we do believe that parts of Christianity and Judaism has truth. And uh, th that's why so, he went so to the knowledge there. In, in the beginning, yeah. So, um, does Islam accept the Bible then? So, this is this is a very important distinction to make. Yeah. We believe in the Torah, we believe in the Injil, yeah. but we don't believe the Old Testament and the New Testament are those things. The Torah was given to Musa, peace be upon him, and the Injil was given to, to Isa, and all the other stuff, was just added on by rabbis or historians or people. And so these are distorted from their original manuscripts. That's what we believe. Right. So what about the hikmah? So the hikmah, hikmah is wisdom. It comes to usually prophets, we mm -hmm. believe. Um, God says that he does reveal hikmah to certain individuals and saints, like right. Um, But we don't believe that the people who distorted the injury. So did, 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 um, didn't David get the hitmah? So yeah, because he's a prophet, he most, he probably, yes, he got the So hitmah. you accept that he was a prophet and he received the... The, the, the revelation. The, which the which in English would be what? The book of? The Zabur would be the Psalms, the but Psalms, it's yeah. not the actual from the Bible, the book of Psalms. We don't believe that. Sorry, you've got lost me again. Sorry. Yeah, we believe he was given the Zabur and it's often yeah. translated as the Psalms, but we don't actually believe it's the book of Psalms in the Bible today. We believe so that there's distortion it? there. Where is that book then? Well, we don't know. We don't know what happened to exactly. So how can we not, like, how can we accept these books? Well, we don't know where they are, but then we only accept, like, the Prophet Muhammad's yeah. book, so, not the others. So, so we, the book of Revelation, the Injil. Is that the, the angel is the book of revelations, right? No, it's, we believe it's what Jesus taught or what Je it's, it's a, it's a book that Jesus had that he recited to the people, but we believe that it wasn't preserved. It was probably lost in time. Okay. Now to go back to your previous point where you said, how can you believe in these things also? And you don't even know where they are. Mm. Our, be our belief is that we believe that these were the truth at their time. We may not have them today, but all of their, the best parts of their message have been preserved in the Quran. So the way we look but at it you're is... You're saying the well, Quran's been preserved, yeah. but other books have been, no. which came before that. Yeah, we believe, yeah. Exactly. That's, a, that's a belief though, because they have found many scriptures 
yeah, that came before the Quran, as in writings and tablets and yeah, you know, they that. did, but we don't believe they were preserved the same. So, for instance, How? like I said, with the Birmingham Quran, you can see that the recitation is exactly the same, but then with the Bible. We believe we know from history that the Romans got in charge of Christianity. It was originally Jewish Christianity, became mm. Roman Christianity, and then they canonized certain books and they threw away certain books. Those books okay. were found in Egypt yeah. in the Dead Sea Scrolls and yeah, whatnot. The Qumran tablet. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and and so there, there's differences here. And okay. so, so, yeah. so you said that Muhammad would go to Warqa for help. Yeah. In the beginning of his journey. But he never converted to Islam all throughout, even yeah. though if he's saying that's the last testament and it was sent through Muhammad and it's the right, he remained a Christian. And that ties into what you just said about the Catholics having a hand and an involvement with the Quran. Yeah. So what I would say with that is Waraka passed away. Um, initially in the Prophet's message, if you were a Sabian Christian or Jew and you did good deeds, then you'd be saved. But there came a point in this prophethood where God declared that, okay, now you do have to accept this in order to be to get salvation. Salvation and being saved, we're gonna we're gonna come back to that yeah. because this is ultimately what I guess following a religion is about, right? Well, it's to know God, to know why we're here, but it's one of the tenets I'd say to to, to save yourself so, so, from so the to, to save yourself from Dalmatian. From, from from punishment and to get eternal but, but bliss. Why why would a loving, caring God want to punish people or put them in that place where you're calling that? Like right, and so right. Forth? So I guess with that, it's to do with God doesn't want to punish us, but He created free will. And, and the we, already, problem, we already spoke about. Yeah, that, I know, I know, no. But he just, created free will, but He doesn't want to punish you. Yeah. But He creates free will so that if you choose wrong. He can still punish you and put you into this place where you're going to be punished. Yeah, so he doesn't want to punish you, but the opposite of light is darkness. So if you go, what if you do things that wait, God wait, 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 I have to slow you down because I like to. I want to really understand where you're go coming for it. from. Yeah, he doesn't want to punish you, but he creates a place called hell to punish you. Because yes. if he doesn't want something, he yeah. can just not have it. Just it's not, true. not have hell, not have yeah, suffering, not have any. So he does want it. But no, no, no. So there's a That's difference one. between. Uh, go on, go on. So the second point, point was yeah. about the. Um, you said the opposite of light. Yeah, the is, absence of light is darkness. Right. So. But light was created. Yeah. So so it would that means darkness existed before light. Well. I was trying to make a point about. Uh, go on. We'll yeah, come back yeah. to that. But yeah, yeah I, wanna, yeah. I do want to touch on that. Yeah. yeah. So. For instance, God doesn't want to punish us, but he's given free will. And what what do you say? Like when, when a person who is a rapist, murderer, he's a really evil, nasty piece of work. Yeah. And he's done such evil to so many people. And God gave free will. So he said, you have the ability to do that, yeah. but there will be repercussions. Unfortunately, the place you know that what place I would will go to, to is hell. I would say... Yeah. Why did God allow all those things to happen in the first place? The, the murder, the being a horrible person, being yeah. an evil person. Because if God has the power, yeah. like you say, kun mm -hmm. faya kun. Yeah. Be and it is. Yeah? yeah. So it doesn't make sense to say God create evil, rape, wickedness. So let's not say planet. God created rape. Where did it come from? Well, it came from if us. He it came if from he created everything, beings. right, but he created us. He created us, but we've... He created us we have with a, that with, within us. Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying that we're rapists. I'm saying but, that okay, we have the, the people, ability the to and... Yeah, sorry. Sorry, ahead. no, I could cut in. Go ahead. No, so... Yeah, I'm not saying that we're rapists. I'm saying that we have the option that, yeah, you can rape, but you shouldn't. That's number one. Number two is there's 8 billion human beings here. Most of them don't want rape anywhere near them, right? Mm. So God gave us free will and then made most of us upright standing people. And then when we disobey God, we point the finger saying, oh, why did you make me do this? When everyone else can just keep us in, in, in a position to do the right thing. So it's up. we've been given the responsibility, we've been given free will to do the right thing and but, to stop the evil. Mm. We can't blame God for when we do evil and then get upset that he punishes us for hurting each other for doing the evil. Don't you see how that doesn't make sense? How you're setting up yourself to say, 
you have the ability yeah. to do evil. Yeah. But God gave you the abilities that you have. God gave you the ability to do evil and to not do And then do he evil. says, yeah, he gave you the ability yeah. to do or not to do. Yeah. And I'm saying... Why did he not, not give us the ability to do evil if he wants us to be good? Then we wouldn't be able to go, I want to be evil or do evil because right. I wouldn't have the ability to so do it. This so is, if God can do anything yeah. and he did that, yeah. there would be no problem. But he gave, yeah, yeah. You, he gave some people the will, as you say, yeah. to choose to do the evil stuff. Yeah. And then when you do it, because he gave you the ability to do it, he comes along and says, well, you shouldn't have done it because I gave you the other choice. Yeah. So you should have chosen the other choice. Yeah, yeah. so we have to take responsibility so that, for our actions. Well, he has to take responsibility for his actions. Well, because he he's responsible for that ultimately. Because mm, he, if he's your if he's your creator, yeah, and everything within you that you can do or not do, he's given you that ability to do. Right. Then he's got to take responsibility because he created you with the ability to do that, and that doesn't make any sense. No, because again, I guess. It goes back to free will, which we've talked extensively on. That's what I'm saying. And he gave the you the idea of free will and the responsibility, bad. the consequences, yeah. who should be blamed for it, you know, these things. At the end of the day, as Muslims, we believe that this life's a test. There's a bit of hell here. There's a bit of heaven here. Ultimately, we have to do the right thing and then heaven will come. If we do the wrong thing, the world will resemble more similar, uh, similarly to hell. Yeah, but that doesn't add up to me when and he can do... And we're going to die and go to, and, and it's a test. So at the end, we'll go to judgment day. But why is he testing you when he already knows what you're going to do? That's what I'm trying to say. That, to me, it, that's why I'm like, make it make sense. Because even like in the Bible, because again, um, I studied Christianity, yeah. studied Islam. And that's why I'm, okay, let's move on from that. Because you touch about light and darkness, yeah? Yeah. I want to go into darkness because... I found there was a lot of racism as well in Islam, right? So I and disagree, but carry on. Yeah, let me make my point yeah. because you said that light is, um, a, what did you just use the term? You said it was so opposite. Said, yeah, you said it's the opposite of darkness. Yeah, I, to make the point about the problem of evil, I said light and darkness. The right. absence of good is evil. Right. They have to exist. If good is to exist, evil has to exist. Right. You can't have one without the other. But, but, but what I'm saying is, yeah. You can if Allah could will it to happen. Yeah. Unless he can't do it. So he can, but at the end of the he day, he just chooses not to. He's the king of everything that exists. It's his test. All we yeah, do, but, we're but, just slaves. But we're making excuses say. for Allah by saying that. By saying that he can get rid of evil, yeah. but he chooses not to. And yeah. then when people do evil, yeah. we blame the people for it. Yeah. But then Allah can come along and play the hero. And put them into hell for but doing something. We've been given something. responsibility to look after ourselves. Yeah, but I'm saying, okay, let's let's. Cause yeah, I think we're going to go around. We're going to go around in circles. Point. Yeah, go right. On. You see why I have a problem with Islam with the racism part is go for it. the the um. Do you know what the black stone is? The black stone near the Kaaba. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know? Do you, okay? Where where did the black stone come from? So the black stone was this ornamental stone that. Before if Islam was even there, it was near the Kaaba as an ornament. And it was just some ornamental thing, really, just to decorate the Kaaba a bit. Right. And uh, after, I mean, I think the best way to illustrate its significance as Islam is Omar Ibn Khattab, the third caliphate, he said, I don't believe that you give me any benefit at all, but I'm just going to kiss you because I saw the Prophet kiss you. That's it. So there's not really any... When you say kiss you, you're talking about kissing the stone. Kissing the stone. Right. It's a tradition to kiss the stone, but there's not really any spiritual benefit. There is, unfortunately, this like superstition that absorbs sins and stuff. It used to be white, became black. But that's we don't really believe in that. Yeah. Well, this is this is what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. You are, you said you're not Al Hajj, so yeah, Al Hajj, because you've never been to Hajj to do your pilgrimage, right? Not yet, no. Right. But the history of the the black stone, yeah, it wasn't originally black. It was white. And it was. They say uh, it was. They yeah. say that the angel Gabriel brought it here. It came from heaven. And so, it was originally white. I don't know if I believe in that, though. I don't no, think but it's is, a it, is it about. This is what I'm saying. With Islam, we can't choose. No, this we is choose what we, we want to believe and we choose no, what no, we don't no, want to no. believe. But, All we believe is what's in the Quran and what's in the Sunnah. 
If right. it's not mentioned in either of these sources, then there's no divine source for so it. So where it's is it mentioned that... It's culture, probably. Right, but this is what I'm saying. It's like, culture when it suits... It, yeah. When it comes to the sunnah, which people say is the traditions of men, how people did things, yeah? No, it's it's what the prophet said that we should Yeah, but do. how would you know that? Because it's a whole science, but it's it's to do with the chains of narrations. That's right, which and are called which are called a companions, yeah? This is where, like you were saying, there's a chain of companions, yeah? Well, that they keep a list of... They, they kept the old tradition alive that he did right. such and such. So, so, yeah. so that's like, as I mentioned, certain hadiths, like yeah. mentioning Bukhari and certain people, yeah? If you study Bukhari. Islam, it literally says that this stone was white and it got black because when people were kissing it, as you said, the sins of the people so, went into it and turned it... And turned it uh, turned, let, let me just finish. Yeah, sorry, turned sorry, it black. Yeah, turned it black, yeah? The Muslim world pray five times a day, yeah? And okay. they, they, where do they face? The they Kaaba. face the Kaaba, yeah. Right. And that's where the black stone is. So isn't that worshipping that stone? No. So in the beginning, the Muslims would face Jerusalem as the first direction, the Qibla, the place of worship. Yeah. So it's a direction, a prayer direction. And then God made... Uh, the prayer direction changed towards the Kaaba. Why? Because it's the prayer direction that God wanted. Yeah, but why though? Why did he change it to that direction? Because, and, that's where the Kaaba is. And right, yeah, but stone. it's because God said so. It's not because we worship a cube or a rock. Okay, so why do, why do you face that direction when you pray though? Because God said so. That's all we can... This is faith. God said... So basically, it's just literally, you just say God said so. If God so, said pray towards England, we pray towards England. But it doesn't say that in the Quran. It says in Bakura, yeah. we've seen that, you know, you're sad. You're saying to the prophet that you're praying towards uh, Jerusalem now because they got kicked out of Mecca. I'm going to change the Qibla direction for you. Now face Masjid al-Haram, meaning where the Kaaba is. Right. This is your new prayer direction. Yes. This is where you're going to pray from now on, all of you Muslims forever. Right. That's what the Quran says. So, so, and because so, God said that, that's why we do. We hear, we obey. That's it. Okay. So, yeah. so if I face a different direction and I prayed, yeah, doing the same salah, what will happen? Well, if you intentionally said, "I know more than God, and I'm not going to follow His direction," then it may be rejected because of this. Isn't it because that's meant to be where God is? No, we don't believe that God is in the physical plane on earth at all we don't believe that even though the quran says different things i showed you already where god is here on earth and so no the quran will never say that god is here god is there god will be will encompass everything with his knowledge but he doesn't occupy time and space because he created those things but i thought sorry to like no, no, interject on. but I was wondering, like, what the racism element had to do there. The racism, it's quite a grave thing, yeah, yeah, because because the racism thing is that when um, when 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 I was studying Islam, I found out that there was a lot of racism in it, in the sense of this whole thing about the black stone, um, you know, facing that way to pray, and um, that if you didn't do that. And the thing about the you know the stone being black because of people kissing it and it turned from white to black, which is kind of saying that it was pure and white and then it became black when the sin says so like black is synonymous with being sin or evil, you see? And then when I read the scriptures and it says that Allah created the light, then it's like, then I read the Bible, um, the Quran and it says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the he of the of the heavens. Right. And I'm like, how can Allah, Allah be the light if He created the light? And Allah would have had to be in black or darkness before the light, before He created the light. So when you come into like Islam today, you see little signs of racism where the Arab world, like they they call a lot of black people that they call converts. They're called the names are given like Belal. And then the slavery element ties in when we go into like the slave trade. And then I'll tie it with Islam and you're getting things like, you know, like Abd, a, a slave of Allah. 
Yeah, where that word ab means slave. I don't know if you've done any. Yeah, right. Abdullah means slave of Allah. Slave yeah. of Allah. So it's like, I don't want to be a slave of anyone. I don't want to be a slave because when you look at what a slave is and how slaves are treated and what slavery did for black people, it's not a good thing. Right. And and so that's why I was asking you about that. There's quite a few points that. there we yeah. need to unpack. All right. So, okay. So we'll start with the first point, which is racism, right? Yeah. So the final testament to Islam and racism is in actually the Prophet's farewell sermon where he says that there is the non-Arab is not better than the non-Arab I mean the Arab is not better than the non-Arab and vice versa men are not better than women and vice versa the only thing that makes you better in the sight of God is piety is taqwa, is God consciousness okay. and even the Quran God says we made you different people, not so you should fight each other, but so you get to know each other. In and the only tribes, so you can yeah. Listen. And the yeah. only pe person who's better in the sight of God is the person who's got piety. The more right. pious you are, so it's a kind of a meritocracy in terms of piety that makes people better. And it, so that that's the first point. Mm -hmm. The second point with culture, with with the people treating people badly, if they do that, then they're going against the teachings of of Islam. Because okay. think about it, the Prophet. His foster son's name was Zaid. He married an Ethiopian woman, a black woman, mm. and they had a son called Usama. And the Prophet loved Usama. It was like his own grandson, basically. Mm. And so there, even interracial marriages and stuff existed back then. It has no place in Islam. This is what we call jahiliya. It's a kind of ignorance. Mm. It has no place in Islam. And then in terms of slavery, that's a whole topic. Mm. But the distinction we must make is the difference between chattel slavery and normal slavery. Did and Muhammad have slaves? Well, I believe he may have. But, okay. but let me unpack it for yeah, you. Go ahead. So chattel slavery is what was practiced in the transatlantic slave trade in America. Mm -hmm. You had a slave, their children were your slave, they, were, they had no rights against you, they couldn't take you to court, and they were just encaptured or they were just sold to you and they had no rights. They were just commodities, mm -hmm. like goods. Whereas slavery everywhere else, and especially in Islam, it was indentured servitude. So if you're a prisoner of war, the way you free to reintegrate into society was you become a slave, pay your dues, and you could buy your slavery. If you were abused and neglected, etc., you could take your own master to court. You actually had rights. Uh, and if you had loans they had to pay off and you didn't have the money, you would say, Can I be I'll be your slave for a bit, pay it off? And there's no welfare benefit system as well. So if you're if you're hungry, starving in the street, but a slave is a slave. I know it sounds well, to say I know, but that's the thing. Every society had slaves. The black people enslaved the uh, black had black slaves. Asians had Asians. Indians had Indians. The transatlantic and modern technology then allowed white people to enslave blacks. And There's it's two major on... slave trades that black people went through, as you know, in the sixteen hundred, okay. in the fourteen hundred, right. and then in the sixteen hundred. Okay. The fourteen hundred one was the transatlantic. Atlantic slave that you're talking about with the right. Arabs and the Arabs actually the transatlantic slave. wasn't that to America are you talking about the Ottoman Empire slavery yep those there was even before yeah. that the, in Zanzibar you know that those um, Arabs that were enslaving a lot of black people you okay. see so even till today as you said when right. when you take your shahada which is one of the tenants yeah you're you're, you're given that name of Abdullah which is a, a slave of Allah and I'm like Black people experience slavery, and even till today, when I mention about like the nation of Islam, it's really the mainly like the Wahhabi sect and the uh, the Arabs, and a lot of Sunnis as well. Um, you you they they still don't accept say the nation of Islam as Muslims because they say they don't live according to the Sunnah, right? And when you start to look at right. Sunnis who profess to live according to the Sunnah, right. they all they dress differently, they do things differently. And uh, you hardly will find a black person that can marry into the culture of one of the, the you know what I mean, the Arabian... Right, right. So, Arabs. okay, so yeah. quite a few things to unpack there. Um, in terms of culture yeah. and religion, these things, they have to be kept apart. Unfortunately, it's true. Mm. A lot of people don't like interracial marriages. They want to keep things normal the same people resist change yeah and you know 
it all depends on the family. Now, if it is because they say, okay, this person is black and they're mm. beneath us, that's why we're not going to marry our daughter to them, then that is Islamically, that's sinful because we believe that all of children of Adam are equal. So can a Muslim marry a Christian? So a Muslim man can marry a Christian woman and a Jewish woman. A Muslim woman would not be able to marry anyone but a Muslim man. That's what I'm saying. Why though? That's, so that why is racism. So why is that? Yeah. It's because when the Muslim, when the Christian woman and the Jewish woman comes into the man's family, yeah, if she has children, to Islam, isn't it? Well, they don't need to. So, but, she, so she can remain a Christian. Yeah, yeah. But um, the thing is, there's a caveat. You know, they have to be chaste and stuff. But the children will be raised by the husband's family. And so they will be stronger Muslims as a result. This is one of the wisdoms that we gauge from it. But yeah. if, it, if the shoe was on the other foot, the Muslim woman would have all these Christian and Jewish or non-Muslim uh, family members who would yeah. influence the children. And so their children would have no faith. So that's the wisdom behind that. Mm. Men and women are, they're, they're but, equal, but they're not the yeah, same. Men and women are equal in Islam. Well, they're equal, but they're not the same. So what, what do I mean, mean by that? Yeah, please. Because yeah. sometimes you say things and they're yeah. like yeah. not clear for me. Yeah, yeah. So because in the mosque, the women have to pray the back, yeah, and the men are always the ones leading the prayers and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. So, yeah. so the wisdom. So men and women are equal. It's the same way that all races are equal. That to be great in front of God, you need piety. You need taqwa. But God understands his creation more than anyone what else. What does taqwa actually really taqwa mean? Taqwa means God consciousness. Sometimes it's mistranslated as fear of God, but it's just awareness of God. So if you see that you have the opportunity to do something evil, you think to yourself, God's watching me. I have to be better than this. And then you stop yourself and you're rewarded for not actually pursuing that evil. Right. And so living your life conscious of God, of doing the daily rituals and prayers, alms giving, that makes you better in the sight of God. Sure. Now, in terms of women and men, we're physically different, spiritually, we're the same. And so, uh, God says in the Quran that God made man qawam over women, meaning that they have certain advantages that will give them authority over women. But the women also have rights over the man. So, I mean, it's a whole topic. But a lot of women in Islam, yeah. even with my experience, they feel they're suppressed. They, like you said, they're covered up from head to toe. Right. They've got to stay at the back. Right. It's always the men at the front. Yeah. And they don't really, even like, even in, you know, certain countries, I don't want to mention names, like they, they can't drive, they can't go to school. Yeah, they can't yeah, do yeah. a lot of things because they feel that they're very sub okay. subjugated and suppressed by, as, by Islam. As far as the faith is concerned, God decreed that the men cover from the navel to the knee and the women cover except for the hands, the, the face, and the feet. But why though? Because... What, what, because because it's, it's like... I could say that's but because... But is that in the Quran, what you just said? About well, yeah, so, so in, in Surah... In Surah, I think Surah Nisa, so woman, God says back in the day, they used to cover, they used to have the cleavage out and they used to cover their hair. And he said, just cover the hair like you're doing and also your bosom. Well, and so... I'm saying why though? What's well, the purpose of it? I could tell you that it's because, you know, men have a strong sexual proclivity towards women, is to keep chastity, etc. But because we're Muslims, we just say, because God told us to do that. If God told us to do anything, then God knows best. There's always going to be maybe some sort of scientific... So you can't but... really question Allah then, can you? You can't question what he does. If it, you just do everything he tells you to do... That's so then part that, of the you're worship. Really like a slave to Allah. That's literally what well, I'm Well, that's it. We believe that if you're not a slave to Allah, you're a slave to yourself. We believe that if, if you don't want, want the desires of God, you want the desires of yourself. And what your desires are, whether it's women, money, materialism, hedonism, it will change to are that. But all things that he created. Well, because you can't say he, was, he wasn't aware of these things because this is what I keep saying, that this Allah... It's like he will create all these things, give you the ability and the free will to be able to do it. And then when you do, mm -hmm. he says, why did you do it? Yeah. But he knew you were going to do it because yeah. by putting it there, it's a temptation for you to yeah. do it. So, so why would he put you in that predicament yeah. or that situation? Yeah. So again, we're circling back to free will and the consequences existing. Consequences exist. He said there are consequences 
don't do that and, and you have the free will to do it or not. And if you choose to do it and you go in a bad direction, it's on you, it's not on God. And we're, oh, we're just okay. different on this point. I think yeah. we've really lab laboured that point. About yeah, we've really hit that point. But yeah. right, let's talk about some more like just general stuff then, right? Like, in terms of, you know, like what we call like terrorism and things like okay. that. Yeah, because obviously um, there are incidences where, not just Islam, but um, we're talking about Islam, right? Right. Where, you know, people put like and blow up buildings, blow up you know, with bombs and things like that, the whole terrorist thing. Right. What, what, and they, this is where to become a, a, a martyr, for example. Right, right. right. I want to understand from you yeah. what that is and why does that make sense? Because it so, doesn't make yeah, sense again. No, no, so it doesn't make sense. So yeah. terrorism, we don't believe is a monopoly of any religion. We believe mm -hmm. most religions are peaceful. Unfortunately, geopolitics exists. Mm and guerrilla warfare exists and you have these things up. Now, if you put all the conspiracy theories to the side, we can just say that Islamically, most of the scholars, if not all, say that suicide bombing is yeah, wrong. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's wrong. Uh, you can't just say you'll be a martyr because you kill yourself. Killing yourself in Islam is a grave sin in mm. of itself. Right. You may not go heaven if you kill yourself. And so why do they say that then? Why do they believe that by, like for example, if, yeah. like you say, going to the geopolitics and stuff, yeah. if, say, a Christian country are in war with a Muslim country, right. and the someone who's, say, a Muslim decides to do this act of sacrificing their life by blowing up, do you know what I mean, in retaliation, and they, you know, a lot of the times they, they will say, I mean, I know a lot of it is dramatized with like movies and stuff, but they'll yeah. be like, Allahu Akbar, and then blow up the place or blow yeah. up the building because they believe that they're doing a good deed for Allah. So again, every religion has its extremists, its yeah. fanatics. Uh, the bombing of the King David Hotel was done mm. by Jews. The IRA, they said they were Catholics. Uh, the Buddhists in Rohingya. So in Islam, I'm, I'm focusing on Islam. I know you're focusing on Islam, saying that, but I'm just saying yeah. that I think within human nature, there's always an element of fanaticism and ends justify the means thinking, which mm. we actually don't believe in. In Islam, the means justify the ends. Yeah. So, so those they're people just are not misguided. Gonna, they're not going to become some kind of mortal or special. Well, no, because we, we, we can't say that you doing evil is going to make you good. Okay. However, we have to appreciate if they've been brainwashed and all this dogma has been pumped into them from a young age and they don't know any better, yeah. then it's between them and God what happens. But we can't say this is an exemplary okay, representation no, of Islam. You've answered my question. Thank you. No so in terms of, if, I, if someone's not a Muslim yeah. um, in Islam, are they considered to be a kafir or kafirun going to hell or like does every because if, if you're not a muslim because there's yeah. different people in the world if we choose not to accept islam or yeah. to become a muslim what happens to those people so i guess the blanket the blanket view would be that and then god knows best as a muslim i can't point to any human being and say this person's definitely going heaven or hell mm. it's like a saddam hussein versus a mother Teresa. even though saddam hussein said he's a muslim but he did a lot of bad stuff a mother Teresa was a very apparently a very good woman mm. and she didn't do that how can god put one in heaven and not in hell we leave that so, to god so when we're dealing with the day of judgment as you mentioned before yeah. then how how does that work well the day of judgment um, no, but sorry, just to finish off the other yeah, point. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so, but we do believe that as a general rule of thumb, if you've been given Islam and you've seen it for what it is and it's come to you and you reject it, mm -hmm. then the chances are you might be punished with hellfire. But uh, it all depends with God. And then to move to the, the, the next point you mentioned with the judgment day, it's a, it's a whole elaborate process, but there are many points to it. One is that the good deeds are measured against the bad deeds on the scale. Mm -hmm. And then also, ultimately, it's God's mercy that makes you go to heaven. So at the end, God can say So, So you, think, you actually think it's all right for 
I know you keep saying God and Allah, God, Allah, but yeah. I don't know which one you prefer. So, you use God or Allah? so Allah means the what can be loosely translated to as the one God, just God. If with you the deal with Arabic, G. it doesn't mean that. But let's, um, my point though is, God. do you think it's okay for him to have that rule that you can be punished and he will create this place for you to be punished? And how long are you punished for? So... And, and it, it doesn't make sense for a loving being to to create some a scenario. So God, uh, we believe Allah is our Rahman, which is the most extremely loving and you know caring and compassionate, and merciful. But we also believe that He is one of His other names is the most just, and justice exists as well as compassion. If I'm a compassionate person and all I do is compassion, I'm a pushover because I don't look after the needs of the little man. But I have the, to balance yeah, it but with not, justice. If, if you're the one that is in control, this is what I'm trying to get at. If you're the one that's in control, right. there shouldn't be those two sides or two yeah. choices. And because it, what the one that does evil yeah. doesn't make sense to have. The person who's done evil has used his free will to do evil. Yeah, but why does evil exist? This is my whole point. Well, the, the problem of evil is the absence of good. Without good, there would okay, be no so, evil, so, vice versa. So how did evil first come about? God, evil t came about when good existed. I guess it's like a dichotomy. When you when there is an no, ideal, there is like no ideal. Iblis, you talk about Iblis, yeah? Well, Iblis, yeah. And Shaitan. Yeah. Because, again, when Devils, you go to Mecca. Iblis, yeah. um, so what? what is, who is, or what is Shaitan? Because well, that's who's said to be representing evil or the bad sides. But I don't know how right. Shaitan became Shaitan. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. when we start to look at, is Shaitan a person? <laughs> is he a rock? Because when you go to Mecca and people take stones and they throw at that rock and they, they call it yeah. Shaitan. Awuzi billahi mina Shaitan rajim. You know, they did they, they, yeah. So I'm saying, so okay. how did Shaitan so, or right. evil come about? So with, with evil... We do believe it's been there since man. We believe that there are three creations of God that God mentions majorly in the Quran, which is the angels, the humans, and the jinn. Okay. And we believe that the shaitan are evil jinn. Yeah, but we, didn't God, Allah create them? Well, that's the thing. We're always going to be coming back to the idea of free will and abusing not, free will, I'm not trying being to put God's free will aside because free will comes afterwards. Evil because is to, in order for yeah, you to have free will, yeah. that's having two sides to be able to choose one or the other. You see what I'm saying? So before we get to the point of having free will to choose the two sides, I'm like, how did that side come about? How did the evil or the wicked side come about? And what I'm saying is without free will, there can be no evil. So for instance, we believe angels exist, but we believe they don't have free will. All they can do is good. And right. So that proves my point. You've just answered my point. Well, what was that? The point that Allah can make you all good. Because if he can make the angels all good, yeah. he should be able to make the humans all good. Oh, yeah. That's, that we agree with that. Allah right. says so in the Quran, so, so we could have made everyone he, Muslims. How did Iblis become Iblis? What, how did he have the ability? Yeah. Because you know what Iblis means, right? Iblis. Yeah. Uh, I know Shaitan is like the rejected, the cursed one. Iblis, I mean, I don't know. I, Iblis means to rebel, a rebellious one. So Iblis was because a good he, person before that's he rebelled. That's my point, right. So if he was a good person yeah. before he became a bad person, yeah. that means God, uh, Allah knew that or allowed him to become a bad person. And then from that point onwards, yeah. he's now doing bad things. And then when yeah. we say... So what's the difference between Shaitan and Iblis? Well, Iblis is one of the high-ranking jinns right. who was uh, with the angels in the beginning of man's creation. However, God chose to make Adam or man the first uh, ruler of earth or caliphate of earth and he got jealous and angry and arrogant and then he said he rebelled and did not bow down to Adam. And because yeah, of that... Say, how can he do? How can he rebel against because God? Because he God... has free will. So God allowed him to rebel against yeah, him. Yeah, I guess so. It's a test and God allowed him to but use his free will to do test. evil. You keep saying this testing. Yeah? Go on. When you take a test, yeah. 
the test is to establish an outcome, right? The test is to gauge the, if the person's the good or bad. The outcome, yeah. So if, if, you, if, you studied, if you studied, um, let's say you studied a subject, let's right. say maths, yeah, yeah, at, at university, in order for you to pass, you may be given a test called an examination that you sit to see whether you've learned and passed the test. And okay. if you get if you get a certain percentage, like you know, maybe above 60 percent, yeah, you've passed the test. Yeah. And I'm saying that's only for someone who doesn't know whether you're gonna be good or bad. Because how will I know you're gonna pass the maths test before I test you? But if we're talking about Allah, we're saying Allah knows everything and he's the knower. Right? Yeah. That's one of the 99 attributes, right? Okay. So he already knows. So there's no need to test you. So Because it, it, it's kind of redundant to say, I already know what you're going to do, but I'm going to test you anyway so that I can see or prove that you're going to do what you do. So the test is so that you know what you deserve, where you're going to go. But I'm not going to know that because Allah is the judge, right? God knows where we're going to go, what we're going to do. But we're here in the driver's seat right now and we're going to we see who we be, are. We can't be. Why not? So we have to make the distinction. So basically, yeah. Just because God knows where you're going doesn't mean you're destined to go. Like, it doesn't mean you're going there. It doesn't mean that you don't have the agency. Like, you, It doesn't limit you. You're actually still in the driver's seat. Even if you get there, you're not destined to get but there. But I'm not though. If God knows where I'm going to go, no matter what I do, that's where I'm going to go. Unless you're saying I can override God's outcome. So it's... it's can, I, can I, if, if God knows my intentions, where I'm going to go when I do whatever I do, right. how can I avoid that? Because he's saying you're going there. So no matter he's what not, I do, I'm no, going to no, go no, there. No, no. He, so you have to understand how it is. He's not saying you're going there. He's saying that, oh, I know that you're going to get yourself there. That's the distinction we need to make. We are making so, ourselves so, so every going day there. I don't call on him to guide me and help me to walk the Surat al-Mustaqim so that I can be favorable on the Day of Judgment. So, so can you repeat that? Okay. You know the Surat al-Mustaqim? Surat al-Mustaqim, the straight path, yeah. The straight path, yeah. Yeah. Because he says that's the narrow path. Because the other one is wide, where you're going to go to the, the road to hell. Is white, but the one to heaven is slim. If I can use that English. Well, term. in the Surat al Mustaqim, it just it just means the straight path, the path of the ones who he's bestowed his grace upon. That's what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he already knows that because he's the one bestowing that grace upon. He needs to. You no, know, so he's going to guide us, but you need to want to be guided, and you need to do what he wants you See, to do. See, that's what I'm saying. There's so many contradictions because you're saying he's going to guide us, but then. It's like, if I'm going to be guided by Allah, yeah. there's no way I should have a new thing to worry about. But then you're saying on the other side, hand that, that I'm not safe. So you have to, first of all, you have to seek guidance. And then, as we Muslims would say, you'd have to seek guidance. You'd have to accept Islam. You'd have to follow Islam. But, and but you then, didn't ask my question, because my question originally was, what if I don't, and I'm like, not a Muslim. Yeah. Um, I just live my life. You know, peacefully, I do, you know what I mean? I'm not a Muslim. I don't, I don't subscribe because what it sounds like is if you don't believe as we do or follow this book and do what we do, yeah. then you are a kafir. You're not, you're, 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 you're doomed, basically. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't, if, if Islam came to you and it came to you in its proper form and you rejected it, and God gave this book and guidance from the seventh heaven, we believe in space, all the way to earth. Ah, you just touched on something else I wanted to say. You just yeah. reminded me. You believe in space? Go on. Yeah, believe. so so it came all the way there and you said, sorry, God, I know better than you. I'm going to live my life the way I want to. It says here that if I don't believe in you, that I'm going to go hell. I think I'll choose that part. Thank you. And then and then you get you go to hell and you get upset about it. We don't really have, we can't really help you here. You know? so, so basically, you have to, you have to, only people that are going to make it to heaven are Muslim, according, well, to, according before, to what you're saying. So, before Islam, 
it depends on the guidance then. Mm. And then after Islam, it depends on if you get the message, if you've lived a good life, all these other factors but that you've got to You're saying it's yeah. the Quran and Islam is the last yeah. The last testimony and the last like, testament to, you could to, say. to humanity. Yeah, yeah. And I'm saying to you that so you're basically saying unless people follow or become Muslims mm. and follow Islam, they're basically doomed. Yeah, and so what I'm saying is that's generally the point, but yeah. we can't say who's doomed or not because some Muslims may be very evil and then some non-Muslims may never have heard of the Quran or Islam or maybe it was misrepresented to them and so God will judge them differently. But the general rule is, if so it's come to you... there's still hope for people who, are not, who don't follow... Yeah, yeah there's still so hope if, they, if they've never come across it, etc. Okay. But if it's come to you in the perfect form, and then you rejected it, and you saw that, yeah, this is the, yeah, what the message you, says... We already established about knowing whether it's in the perfect form, because what is the perfect form? Well, the perf well what I mean by that is, unfortunately, Islam is misrepresented in the media as some terrorist, crazy religion, mm. suppressive to women and... We're hateful and we hate everything. Of course, any sane person may hear what's on the news and say, you know what, that can't be the truth. Mm. But if someone came to you and answered your questions and ran you through all the points, and then after that, you were like, okay, I understand it, I got a good grasp of it, but I reject it, mm. then there may not be any help for you. All right, well, I seem to have asked you a lot of questions. Yeah. You haven't really asked me much. Oh, yeah, about yeah my way of life or whatever. Do you have any, any questions that you want to ask me? Yeah, so um, before you mentioned... It's only fear, yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. So before you mentioned it, I've never heard of the... Was it Wusabat? Wusabat, yeah. Yeah, Wusabat. I was wondering when it came about and yeah. what its major teaching is. You said it's not a religion. Mm. So is that more like a Buddhism thing where it's a kind of, you know, like, please enlighten me. No, 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 it's not. It's not. Um, it's a culture. As I said at the beginning, it's African spirituality. Yeah. Um, we know that Africa was here first. Every every like archaeologist, anthropologist, historians, the cradle they all, of civilization. They, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we, um, I asked you at the beginning about the difference between someone being a convert. We, um, as Africans, realized that even though we were here first and we had our own culture and way of life, we actually went into these other religions, such as Christianity, because of the slave trade. Because colonialism. Colonialism. Yeah. And we followed that book thinking, yep, this is the word of God. But obviously we realized that the way we were being treated was not very godly. So some then were en en enslaved by the Arabs and went into Islam. And from that, again, a bit of colonialism from from both the Europeans and from the Arabs. And even though when we went into these religions, we were referred to as converts because we were converting from our original way of life into these like religions, um, Islam, Christianity, Christianity being more really the origins of uh, the Romans and the Greeks way of life, Islam being an Arab way of life because Muhammad was an Arab. It was his religion originally given to him for the Quraysh tribe and then it is spread. And so we found again that it didn't work for us. It didn't work for me. And in tracing backward, we were like, okay, it says in the Quran, be aiders of Allah, right? So we, it, when we were in Islam, we were known as Ansar Allah. I can give it, in fact, there's a, a few quotes if you're not familiar with it. So for example, if you go to, um, Quran 61.14, it talks about being aiders of Allah, which we, we chat, and, and Quran 3.52 and 61.14. Um, and so when we were in these religions, it didn't work for us. We realized that we were being subjugated and we were calling on these foreign names like Allah, like God. And we went backwards to going back to what came before the Bible, what came before the Quran. And that led us back into ancient Egypt because our faces are on the walls of Egypt. And we started to learn and study about the ancient Egyptians being black people and where they tied back to, which is coming from the stars. So when you just said about the seven heavens and things like that, I wanted to ask you a question because in Islam, um, Muhammad also traveled and he went. Uh, you familiar with the Burak? 
Barack. Yeah, so I met Raj. Right, exactly. So I wanted to ask you, where did he go? But we know that our ancestors came from um, the Sirius constellation, you know, and, and the Orion constellation, which are in the heavens. Right. Um, and then, you know, set up the civilization here, and we are the um, descendants of those ancestors. So we started to practice our way of life, which right. is which is also about our culture. Um, we realized that our language predated Hebrew, Arabic, um, the Semitic languages. So that's where um, we found out that we have to be ourselves. Just like every other race, they have to be themselves and not really have the same God as the slave master, which is why I talked about the racism and the slavery right. as well. So, yeah, that's kind of where I am at now because when we connected back with our our ancestors, it works for us because we, we're not going into someone else's foreign religion where we're not even accepted or even though Wu Sabat is for everyone as well. It's like for humanity, it's about, right. like you're saying, being pious and um, living truth. So ultimately, it's about the truth. That's why we're very particular when it comes to questioning and facts and like getting the details so that we know exactly what we're talking about because right. we've been yeah we've been tricked and bamboozled for for years and years in these right. religions but so i have to say why. one thing so yeah i you mentioned colonialism at the hands of christians the portuguese british french yeah the whole of africa was colonized except for the ethiopians and I do agree that there was that, mm. but to say that Islam colonized Africa, I can't quite agree with that because history has told us that it was through trade that the Islam spread through Africa. Uh, most notably, there was a man called Mansu Musa, mm -hmm. and he was the richest man in the world at the time because mm. I believe it was Mali, Mali West yeah, Africa, right. mm -hmm. where there was so much gold there. And he yeah. made a famous pilgrimage where he gave so much gold to the Arabs in Egypt that inflated the economy. And I can't believe that he's a black man, he's the richest man, he willingly chose to be Muslim, and he's a slave master, even though he's ruining a, a country's economy for his generosity, giving mm. all this gold. So in terms of uh, Islam being spread by the sword and colonialism, I'd have to disagree with that point. So you're saying there was no... Arab slave trade. No, no, I'm saying, yeah, there was slavery. It yeah. wasn't chattel slavery, and it was black people enslaving other black people and then selling them to it's Arabs. It's still going on till today, though. Ar Arabs still enslaving Africans till, to, till this day. Uh, May, maybe, maybe you're not familiar with it, but this is something that... So I'm aware that happening. slavery does exist, but as, as I said... If you can go to Dubai, you can go to many places today yeah. and they still okay, do Okay, well, in terms of Gulf countries and these kind of sweatshop contracts, yeah. of course, it's not ethical. I don't agree with it. Mm. But then to say... I, and again, I'm not putting um, it on you because yeah. at the end of the day, I, I, I know the difference. That's why when we had the conversation, myself and your um, brother-in-law, I was explaining that yeah. true Islam, when people practice it properly as being Muslims or people that are of, of peace, yeah. not the other stuff, as you said, the terrorism, yeah, the, yeah. do you know what I mean? The, all yeah, the, yeah. the slavery and all of that, yeah. that it is a good religion for those who practice it, for the yeah, true yeah. Muslims. Yeah. And it's the same way when it comes to Christians, and it's the same way for, for Jews. Right. And it's the same way for us, meaning right, right, that right. Uh, a Musbatu, or that's one who is of, of, of Sabian, or who's practicing Wu Sabat, not oh, everyone why? is going to be... So Wusabat, sorry, is it a Sabian? The, yeah, the original... Because when you look, when you research Sabian, there are different types of Sabians. Okay. Those, there are those that, it, you know, the Yemen, and it talks about those, that like you mentioned the Ottoman and all that, yeah. that era. But Sabian, as in the original word, Saba, which goes back to Shaba or Sheba, you're talking about... Solomon. Yeah, the, yeah right. exactly. The Queen of Sheba, and that Saba ties to the stars because it means stars as well it goes back to the to the stars 
where our ancestors came from. Right. So, so I wanted to ask you, you didn't um, answer that question about Muhammad traveling to the, to the seventh heavens, heavens and, yeah. and how did he do that? And what, yeah, is, yeah. That all, what is that all about? So again, the whole incident of this Suwa al Mi'raj, where he went from Medina, mm. so not Medina, sorry, Mecca, Mecca mm. to the Holy Land in Jerusalem. Yeah. And then he went from there to, he ascended through the Buak, mm. uh, some sort of, mystical animal he went through space and then he met prophets along the way mm -hmm. and then he spoke to Allah close but behind a kind of a veil, a veil. Yeah. yeah again it's a testament to our faith it's more of a belief yeah but let, listen to what you said people, huh? yeah sorry yeah, so, yeah. so yeah it's quite the elephant in the room is you're telling me some guy 1,400 years ago mm. went from one country to another country, then flew to space, spoke to God, got some words of wisdom, then came back. Mm. The whole religion of Islam, all religions, yeah. Judeo-Christian, etc. religions, they're miracles. We believe that God sends an angel to a prophet, to a man, to tell us how to live our lives. The whole thing comes from a place of faith. Right. We, but we do believe that there are so some you, miracles so it, and prophecies. Do you think it, it happened or didn't happen? Well, I must say I, I believe it did happen. Right. But what is this animal? What is this animal? Well, we don't know much about it. Right. All we do know is that it has the ability to traverse space and the angel Gabriel was there as well. And right. Yeah. So, so when we deal with wolves, about and facts, you're saying that an animal traveled to space, basically, if you believe it, because you said you believe it. Well, if God can do anything, he can do that. Okay, let me put it. something to you. Would you say that was an extraterrestrial? Or was it a, a, well, a craft that he would have travelled in? To it go? could have been. Right, so it, it, been, it, yeah. it, it might be misinterpreted well, as, that's a, as the an thing. animal because you say you don't. it's mystical, you don't know what it is. So We'll have to go back that... to the Quran and Sunnah and yeah. see what the definition and descriptions are there. Um, I personally, I don't know too much about the Barak. It's not mentioned by name in the Quran. Mm -hmm. uh, many times when things are omitted in the Quran and not given detail, God doesn't really find them interesting. You know, like <laughs> that you're speaking for God by saying that. God says God doesn't. So not. When well, you say He doesn't find them interesting, not I'm find saying... them interesting. Sorry, He doesn't find them important for our spiritual well-being. For well, instance, it must be because how you many just said He yeah. that was a very important aspect because He went to heaven to speak. The important with God, aspect, and you said He spoke with God. Yeah, yeah. So did He? So the important, did God have a mouth? Did right, we see right, right. him? Did they have a So he communicated through him to him through a veil. Right. And uh, so he heard his voice. So again, he, he because of his definition that he gave out in Surah Khlas, it's nothing like him. He doesn't have a voice like human beings have a voice. No, but we I'm don't saying, know. Look at the story. <clears throat> How yeah. can he? Why would he have to? If God can send an angel to him, right. like he got the Quran, and God can speak to him yeah. directly. The whole setup of going on this mystical animal, right, traveling into space, yeah, to speak to God, but don't even get to see him because he's hiding behind a veil, yeah. Because and, and I'm saying, so that means if, if he God, didn't yeah. see him, he must have heard him because you're saying he spoke with him. So how how did they converse or speak? So that's the thing. We were told that Moses Musa, mm. he spoke to God through the burning bush. Right? Yeah. He went to a mountain, he saw a bush on fire, and then God spoke to him through that. Now, whether it was through it, it or, or as it? Well, that's the thing. We know it can't be as it because we, we're not told the leaves start, you know, forming mouths and talking to him. This is what I'm saying. When but, we start to break religion and these stories down, yeah. where they're not making sense, like God speaking, talking, yeah. if, if he hasn't got a mouth, how can he speak? Because even when, like I was saying to your um, brother-in-law, how can God sit down in on a throne in heaven or you know, in general? How? Because this is describing so someone that has I think I, I, I know, attributes yeah. of, a, of a man. So, so I think I know where, where our issue is here. Okay. The issue is that God made mankind's mind finite, brain finite. We can't comprehend the infinite. 
So God is infinite. The moment you can just capture him and quantify him and put him in a bubble, looks like that, sounds like that, is that. Yeah, but you only it go makes by his him, words. It, we're limiting him. But don't, don't, don't everything you're that saying, we're, do, we're doing that based on what he says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he communicates words. so that we'll understand and get a bit of a grasp. But we can't truly grasp God's nature because we can't grasp the infinite. Exactly. Our brains so I would can melt. I will only yeah. have the ability to use my mind so yeah. when he says, I'm the light, for example, as we spoke before, right. I will, my mind's going to go, hmm, what is a light? And I'm going to think then, of light right. based on the different types of light. Right, right. And, and then what I would do is, okay, what did God's spokesperson say that he meant by this light? Oh, he just meant so that it's guidance. If the spokesperson can be told and he knows, yeah. why can't we be told because directly? Why do I have to go through a spokesperson? This is what I'm trying to say. The, I have a direct link to God, right? In terms of asking for piety, uh, for forgiveness, piety, guidance, we have a di in terms of prayer, du'a, we That's have a saying. direct line. That's a in direct... terms of understanding the religion, God needed to send a representative. See, that doesn't make sense. You can't say, in terms of du'a, yeah. we have a direct... Yeah, we, we, we can ask so God. we can ask him questions. But in terms of the intellect, but, we need a teacher. No, no, he listen to this. Yeah. You're saying I can ask him a direct question, but I can't. No, 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 no. You can ask him for forgiveness that's and for direct. guidance directly. That's a, that's a direct but question. You're not going to be like, okay, God, so what did you mean by, why not? Um, are you the light? Yeah, but and why then not? Expect... Why not? Because if I can ask well, him for forgiveness. Well, because if you had direct revelation from God, yeah. that would be a miracle. What? And, because, so think about if you wait, heard, wait, 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 we have to, yeah, this yeah, one, like, so, so you're saying I'm here talking to you, we're having direct communication, yeah, yeah, yeah. but when I do it with God, it's if, a miracle, yeah. So, if one day God just starts speaking, hey, everyone, I exist, yeah, that's a miracle because it's bending no, the laws of science, not, though, and that, now because the miracle exists, God says in the Quran. I could have made angels come down, I could have given the signs, but if that was the case, the test would be over because it's not about a test of faith anymore. You know what's true and what's not true. And this is not but how God I'm wants it. You, you're saying you know what's true and what's not true. But, I don't but there's saying. doubt because if I have a doubt and I can, through prayer, I can say, oh, God, Allah. Guide me. Right. And but, who but, will he guide you through? A person who's knowledgeable. Who studied, yeah, who knows what the prophet of God, yeah, his own I'm, representation I'm said. To him directly. And God answers through indirect means. That doesn't make sense, bro. But How can I speak to God directly and then he answers me indirectly? That doesn't make sense. Like, I'm here with you and I say to you. Yeah, but I'm a um, human being. I'm not God. Okay. Yeah. You're not God. But God blew into you and you became a living soul. No, God blew into Adam, our but forefather. Adam, oh, we are Adam. No. So we're not children of Adam. We didn't come Yeah, down. I'm not my father. I'm the son of my father. And yeah, this, but your father and for is... For Adam, I'm the son times a billion to No, me. no, but I'm saying you're, you're a replica of your father. No, I'm not identical to my father. I didn't father. say identical. I said a replica. Well, Meaning, what does replica mean? Because I thought okay, it just you, meant the same. No, when you have a son, yeah. the son will look like you. It will resemble me, but it yeah. might not. Yeah, but... And it won't be identical. Sorry, sorry, yeah, go It will look like you. Yeah, I yeah, know. It's, it's, it's interesting. Um... It will look like you, right. but not only look like you, it has your genetic makeup. Half of my your genetic. DNA. Okay, but it's still how... It's like, okay, if I get water from a glass, yeah. if I get water from an ocean, put it in a glass, right. and I take a drop from that glass and put it into another thing, it's still water. The, yes. the composition that it's made up of is still water. Yeah. So, it, so to say it's not the same... It doesn't make sense. So that's, it, it is the same when so you that, break it down. So the distinction is that something can't be identical completely to something else. It can because water is water. Like water the is components water. that make water, like if we go scientifically, you would say water is what? I know, but isn't H2O, the, right? But on the water droplets divided by time and space. Yeah, if but, I have water but, in Africa and water in America... It's still water. I, I can't say they're the same, though. I can they say they're the same. They're I exactly can say the they're same. the same kind of you know, material. No, no, they're exactly the same when you break them down scientifically. Because H2O is so H2O. So that means, can I be you? Am I you? We are, yeah, because we're all one. Meaning... In, one way, in what way? Right. So when we look at the planet us, yeah? Hydrogen is in everything. 
There's hydrogen, you have hyd hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, right. nitrogen, all living science. matters of life. Yeah. Hydro means water. Okay. Yeah, that's a component of water, hydro. Right. right. That's what I'm saying. When you look at water, it's composed of, when you say H2O, you're saying hydrogen. Two hydrogens, one oxygen. Oxygen. Right. right. And we all are composed of that. So we are one. Because we but are... we're not just water and oh, sorry, let me finish. Let me no, no, finish. we are we are water. We are composed of water. We're seventy five percent water, right? And twenty five percent other stuff: carbon, we, hydrogen, yeah. But oxygen, it's still all part of water. And then our genetic stuck... makeup is different, right? But what I'm saying is, when you look at the periodic table, for example, I know every I the that. first one makes the next one, and the next one, the components are the same okay. throughout. So from the original source, we are connected to. But it. if I'm you and you're me. That means you're Asian and I'm black, but we know well, that's not the case, right? No, no, no. Well, I'm, I'm saying, obviously, there's differences, but there's similarities as well. That's why I was saying similarities your son, your and son, identical. Yeah, but I'm saying when you break everything down scientifically, when you start to break you down, your atoms, you're composed yeah. of atoms, and so am I. So is this table. But so if we break it down. But you can keep going further yeah. in the breakdown, okay. as I said, to going back to what was the first element. Right. You see? So to say that Allah breathed into you and or Adam and then yeah. Adam became humanity. Became do, you actually, do you actually accept that only Adam and Eve were the first people? I believe Adam was the first person and then God made Eve from Adam and then so, so they had sexual reproduction and then they create they How create was Adam humanity. created? Well, Allah says in the Quran that it was... He gathered earth from all over the earth and then he made, it was a bit like a pottery the way he made him. Right. But of course, we can't do that the same. And so there's a divine element that we don't know. But scientifically, do you accept that that, that Allah created a man from the, the mud of the dust of the ground? Well, science, I don't think... So science, it's something that we can repeat, it's observable. And then religion often has things that are divine, which go against science. So you, are you saying that God is a scientist? No, I'm saying that God oh, created science and he can bend science to his will. So he's a scientist because if he created science, he, he's a scientist. So Because everything that comes with science is going to be coming from I mean, what, what does scientist mean here? Because we believe because that I'm trying to the get Big this Bang happened scientist God. In yeah. terms of you saying that he took them the mud or the dust of the ground, like, right. as you say, pottery, cl using clay to form Adam. Right. And then he made woman from Adam. Right. And I'm saying that's not scientifically possible because men come from women, not the other way around. Right. So... So how can a, how can a man come from a woman in science, in real life, in yeah. facts, evidence... But then in the Quran, yeah. it's going to say the opposite to that. So, that's so, the, so, that doesn't, so this is the classic kind of clash sense. between science and religion. Right. Religion says that we came from this primordial soup, we became one cell, then many cells, and then somehow through natural selection evolution, we became humans. And religion says we were from one couple that God made in a miraculous way. Right. And, and which then, one is more credible? Well, that's the thing. That one is statistically impossible. And that which one, one you can't prove. Which one and is from a faith. No, you said that one. Which one is the well, statistically for, impossible? For us to come from a primordial soup and evolve to humans, statistically, it's not possible. But we just said that because when you go back to the building blocks of life, yeah. the, you know, you go back if you to get the, two cells the single, and you single see, cells, yeah. going back to the, you know, the uh, amino acids, the amoebas, you can see that and th those cells divide and then evolve and then germinate and things evolve from that. that right. That's proven. But the one well, you're oh, telling well, well, me... Well, before we say that, yeah. can but, you, but can you, you know, start life again? Sorry. Of, of course. So you can get a cell, an amoeba, put in a Petri jar and then it will become a human if you wait long enough or do enough... Not become a human because you said life. You didn't say human. Well, I said, There's different forms okay, of then, life. From, and I'm saying yeah. early life or when you're talking about cells, they're alive. It's not a humanoid, but life exists. That's why even when you're saying that a large... I know, but what do you mean by life you're, here? You're not letting me finish. I'm sorry. I'm like, okay. So when you're saying that um, Allah took the dust of the ground right. and made man, yeah. there was already life in the in the dust of the ground. Because I didn't there's say life that. forms. No, I, I didn't say that. No, no, I'm saying that. I'm okay, saying life, saying there's life, 
bacteria is life. Right. There are different types of life forms, cells are life, where those atoms that, as I said, become, you know, when they grow and they become right. different things. So that is life. But we're not looking or you're not, I think, saying so that, what that, I was, that is life. What that I was saying life. was, I think, consciousness. Because life meaning something aerobically respires. It turns, you know, glucose into energy and it's functions that's alive, like a, like a so bacteria. Same, same but I'm saying that yeah. a human being actually waking up and having free will and, you know, that kind of, or even like a so cat. So you're trying to say there's no intelligence in bacteria or in... Uh, well, there's no consciousness the same way humans have consciousness. Yeah, but there, there is because, let's say you have cancer. Okay. No, no, I'm not putting that on you, but I'm just saying somebody has this cancer, yeah? Right. Cancer is more intelligent than a human if it can outsmart you to kill you. Right. So what do you mean by outsmart here? Because what you cancer said intelligence. does is you that it divides, it just yeah, does it, mitosis, it, it divides, yeah, divides, it, divides. It, it basically eats out the rest of the other cells. Right? So, so, but what I'm saying about so what, consciousness. I'm still saying, yeah, yeah, but that to be, you have to be conscious to know it's like saying it's like saying light when we were speaking about light yeah how is light able to do what it does in darkness we'd say because god gave it the power and the properties to do as right it so we go right back to what i'm saying that it's god circular, is the original it? scientist yeah yeah, yeah? But, so yeah. so i think where we're kind of getting to is the fact of science versus religion, yeah? Yeah. And I'm saying science is more credible than religion because science is based on facts and evidence and proving what you're saying, whereas religion is based on belief. I believe this, right. so it must be. But a person who's intelligent is going to say, I can't just take your word for it yeah. because... Yeah. That's your belief. You can yeah. believe what you like. And I'm just saying that the whole story of um, Allah just appearing from nowhere. Because how did Well, he... we wouldn't say that. Okay, we, but we I'm saying Allah would have had to come from somewhere to be. Well, so it, if God created time and space, then he can exist outside of time. And time is a linear yeah, but progression how do you from beginning to end. Well, how would you know that? Because God says he created time. That's what I'm saying. So that anyways, you, you would only know that yeah. through the book that right. has been conveyed to you. Right. But, but I'm then saying, what I'm saying... Sorry. What, the yeah. Books have a, a beginning. A book has a beginning. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So before the books, so if we put away the Quran, put away the Torah, put away the Talmud, put away all the books. Right. How would you know about these... God, Allah, whatever, yes, which, well, is, which is by way of the books. So that's why we're saying that he, he would have, if he created us, he would have to give us an instruction manual. But it seems that we've kind of reached the end, I think. Yeah, the producers. that's fine. Should we just do like two minutes of closing remarks? Yeah, yeah, yeah why not? Yeah? Yeah, 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 go on. So uh, shall I start? You want to start? No, you go for it. So I'll yeah. start. So we did a few clashes here. Free yeah. will, non-free will, good, evil, uh, science, religion, mm. uh, the, the stance I take is that I believe I'm a man of science. I believe that science is in line with religion, mostly. I also believe there's a limitation because it's only as good as what you can observe. What you can see, hear, all your five senses, if you can reproduce that, then it's established science. Yeah. Whereas religion, at least Islam, I believe, it just has been the same and always will be the same. It's a constant. But I guess the true message here is, you know, faith, religion, things that give us good. We should stick to those goods. Mm. Uh, faith is like a car, like a Mercedes car. If it crashes into a wall, it's the driver, not the car that's at fault here. And that's with what you said with, uh, you know, all the religions and the Wusabats. And it's very important for us to have these kind of conversations. It's very rich mm. and it's interesting and... It's proof that, you know, we could be civil, have our differences and enrich each other's lives. So mm. thank you so much for seeing No, here. it's a pleasure. It's, a, it's good for you to come and have these conversations. Um, by having these conversations, other people listening learn from it. So, you know, ultimately, it's a good thing. However, um, our differences, as I keep saying to you, is that 
we, um, in terms of Wusa Bat, know that we predate religion. We know that we have a culture and a way of life that when you put it against religion, it actually, like, religion doesn't make sense. Because to, to say good and bad, um, some people are accepted and this is division. Some people are not because you don't follow or do what I say. Um, we don't subscribe to any of that. And when we start to look at it from a scientific point of view, a lot of things don't add up because one is about evidence, prove it. I want to make sure that it's real. And another one is like, just take my word for it. Just accept it because we say so. Um, I'm, and I know that a lot of people in today's world, they're not having that because religion can also be a tool that is used um, to trap people, to enslave people, to bring about wars, as you said, a geopolitical thing that goes on with religion. Um, so, yeah, really, for us, Wusabat is the future, Wusabat is the way. People are entitled to choose what works for them, and, and if they think that staying in belief and staying in religion is what works for them, then that's for them. But I feel that for any true seeker of the truth that wants to evolve and grow, they'll have to go back to that which came before that was... Because it's like, if we ask questions like, who created this person? What language was here first? What instructions were here first? Um, who lived first? And what did they follow? We, we realise that it goes way, way, way back. This is a big humanity and the whole evolution thing is a big story. So yeah, that's um, why Wolf's about for us is, is the one and the way. And it's not, it's not a religion. It's just a culture. Um, many races on the planet have their culture. You know, the Hindus, the Hindus have a culture. The Chinese have a culture. Like you say, Buddhist, um, Romans, Greeks. Um, different people have a culture that they practice. And um, for us, Wusaba is the culture that we practice. So we, you know, we have our dress, we have our own language, our own scriptures, um, basically just like any other culture or any other race. But yeah, it's been it's been really good having a conversation with you, and I think this is what we need to be able to do with anybody who wants to come and have a conversation because we are able to be civil. Um, we're not letting emotions get you know out of hand where sometimes when you have these conversation in religion some people you they get offended they get you know that's why i asked you about the whole thing about trying to do something and say i'm doing it when allah can do it for himself like you know what i mean i'm blowing up something and i'm not just saying um islam because the crusades and you know there are other people that also use that method of violence to um to try and get people to follow their way and with us we'll about it's like for anyone who's willing to accept truth, um, they're welcome. But yeah, thank you.